Tonight we purpose to see the power of God so move in your life that things will be changed around you. We get about Suta. We get about Sura. In the midst of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, we sing praises with Him. In the midst of singing praises, as the offering up of the sacrifice, as they are laid before the altar of God, and it's found holy and acceptable unto the Father, then He sends His fire. If it's not found holy and acceptable unto the Father, you're just going to stand around and wait a long time. And I'll tell you right now, I just want you to understand this one thing. When a sacrifice sits too long, it ain't smelling pretty anymore. Unfortunately, if the sacrifice sits around too long, we need to fire quick. A carcass of a sacrifice, no matter how perfect it is, after two days, just as foul. Are you with me? Hallelujah. So many people have thought that, well, when the fire of God's going to come, they're going to purify it. Now, the blood purifies. The fire of God comes and the sacrifice is holy and acceptable. And Father's made a way for us to get this job done quick. We don't have to wait around for a bunch of years. <laughs> we don't have to sojourn in the wilderness for 40 years. You know what Papa did? He made us holy and acceptable in the beloved. Hallelujah. All you got to do is step out of the realms of you and into the realms of him. And there's only one possibility to do that is by the blood of Jesus Christ and believing that you've been cleansed and that you've been washed as long as you think you're sin stained. As long as you think that there's a problem with your life. As long as there's a breach between you and Him. Sacrifice not ready yet. Sacrifice not ready. Because it's not holy and acceptable yet. It's an offering, a gift that God has provided to all men everywhere. He said, come step on in the side. Come step inside of me as it were. Come step into me. Hallelujah. It's not hard, is it? Summer, it's not hard. Amen. It's not hard, is it? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Harabakishai. You know, I just, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm convinced that there's a great harvest of people coming in the kingdom that are going to step into the anointing as quickly and as, you know, as, yes. as, as real as some are stepped in. Yes. Hallelujah. Just, just step in. And people want to hang on to something that happened a long time ago. Listen, Papa sent that just to shake you up and wake you up. He didn't send, you, he didn't send that to hang you up. You with me? He sent that glorious shaking of his mighty power to see who would go ahead and move forward with him. Hallelujah. You know, I'm just going to, I just, I, I just, I just believe that the Lord's going to prophesy through a bunch of different people here tonight. And there's going to be mighty signs and wonders take place through God's people who are, who are accustomed to submitting to authority. If you're from the rebellious sixties, you got a lot you don't have to go through, you know, because many people in the rebellious sixties took on everything contrary, every, every manner and nature contrary to the kingdom of God and the ways of the Holy Ghost. They got a lot to tear down. But you being under the authority of the Holy Ghost, I'm going to tell you right now, you're being submitted, yielded under authority. Hallelujah. A person that's told what to do says to you, your master comes to you and says, go here and you go there. Come over here and you come over there. Amen. Hallelujah. Ah, then you'll start moving in faith then, you know. You get under authority. My goodness gracious, God will give you some. Amen. Hallelujah. But the Lord spoke to me, you know, just, just spoke to me. I just said, Father, how, you know, I, you know I, I know what you want to do tonight. I know, I know what you want to do. It's very clear. It's not some special revelation. It's that which you've sent from heaven. That's what you purpose that all men do and, and have and function in. God has set us on a course to come into the fullness of the measure, of the maturity, of the ministry of Jesus unto a fully matured man. Not to hang out in religion. Are you listening to me? Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. And to do that, to mature and to grow, the Holy Ghost has come. To strengthen us, to lead us, to guide us, to teach us. The Word of God is the means by which we develop and mature to full maturity. <laughs> Hallelujah. And it's not hard, it's just obedience. It's not hard, it's just obedience. 
It's not hard. It's easy. It's just obedience. It's coming under the yoke. Get yoked up. Yeah. Uh, hallelujah. Get yoked up with Jesus, you see. Get yoked up with the Holy Ghost. It's great company. Hallelujah. Uh, it's the company of the mighty. It's not angels. It's not angels, mighty princes, not cherubims, not archangels, not, 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 not some mighty realm of a uh, father's creation, but it's God himself, the almighty. Come to sojourn. <laughs> come, 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 come to accompany us. Lead us, perfect us, teach us, guide us. All we've got to do is come under the yoke. Jesus said, come learn to me. I'm meek. I'm broken. I'm under authority. I don't do anything of myself. I do, I'm under authority. I do what I'm told. People say, the hardest thing people have to come to is where do you go to learn how to do what you're told? And wherever that is, very few people are showing up, believe you me. Very, people, very few people. If you can go to a school to learn how to tell, place is packed out. Huh. But to come to a school of the Spirit, mm -mm -mm. to learn not to be your own man, do your own thing, go your own places, say your own words. Kiko Ramadai. Opakadeya. Malasataya. Fato Ramakishi. Mungapataya. Money is say. There was this man, an Ephraimite. His name was Osea. And Osea was a unique kind of a guy. Out of probably more than three million people, when the glory of God showed up, he was captivated. He was stunned. He was shocked. He was inebriated. He was, he was taken beyond all that he had ever experienced in his life and said, this is the place I'm staying. I'm not moving from here. Moses called, looked at him and said, you're not going to be Osea no more. I'm calling you Yehoshua. Which ultimately became called in the English language Joshua, which means Jehovah's salvation. I'm going to call you Yehoshua because I'm going to take your life and I'm going to show you what I do through a man who will obey me. I'm going to show you, that I'm going to exemplify the Redeemer, the coming Yehoshua, whose name we call Jesus. He's a unique man. You know, when he stepped out, I'm, I just want to, I want to hearken just a moment to the verse of Scripture. God's command, what, he's, what Papa, when he was all stirred up, said he was going to do. Huh? I mean, I'm telling you right now, Exodus chapter, well, forgive me. Uh, Numbers chapter 14, verse 21 is a situation where Papa is stirred up. He is stirred up. He, his zeal has eaten him up. And uh, Caleb comes back with the ten. And he says, guys, what are you talking about? We will able, let us go up now. Do not hesitate. We will able to do this thing that God commands. He says they are defenseless before us. Everybody else is saying, it's too big. They're giants, the sons of Anak. The Raphim, the Nephali, the giants, and even the sons of the giants, the mighty men, the great men of, of folklore and legend. There's no place for us in that land. The, the, the insurmountability, the impossibility, the, 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 the no way possible to do what God commands. It's beyond us. It takes a miracle. It's supernatural. What you think we are, God or angels or something? And all the people said, let us make us a captain and take us back to a place where we can feel safe under the tyranny of Satan. Is that crazy? under the tyranny of a taskmaster that calls us to serve with cruel slavery. Mm -mm -mm. Men. Joshua says, hold up. This Ephraimite said, hold up. And he began to proclaim the word of God and that which God would do through them if they would simply be willing. And you know what all the people said? Let us stone him. Let us stone him. Father is ready to show forth his power. 
Father is ready. Father is going to take them. And Father allowed them to go and see with their sin, in the sensual realm how impossible it was for them to occupy the place that he called them to live in. God let them hear with the ear and begin to try to comprehend with that thing which they could feel. The impossibilities that would be before them to prove them and try them. And two men were able to see beyond themselves and know that what God has said was absolutely established forever. And though they were not willing to step into his glory, though they were not willing to participate with him, though they were not willing to reach beyond their fears, to reach beyond those things that threatened their life, Father was starting and he said, I tell you this, my glory shall fill all the earth. Look at it. You won't cooperate with me now. But let me tell you this. You mark this down. I don't care what a president, a prime minister, a king, a scientist, a brilliant genius. I don't care what angels say. I don't care what mighty men say. Almighty God has spoken. This you better prepare for. This you better get ready with. You'd be, you would be full of wisdom should you cooperate fully with him. He says, but my glory... You see it? See it? Verse 21, you see it? Will you show it to me? Will you, can you see it? Is you, can you see it? Can anybody see it? Are you stunned? Are you shocked? Do you see the Anak? Do you see the sons of Anak? Do you see his mighty host that stands there and says, there's no way you take in that which I possess? You can't function in healing. You can't function in faith. You can't function in miracles. You can't function in the realms of the holiness of God. You can't walk in his mighty power. You can't have the mantle of, of his majesty. You can't have his garments of supreme glory. Come on now. Are you looking? Yes. Is anybody looking? Yes. I'm wondering. Father says, but truly... As I live, listen to that, listen to God, but truly, this is Father, this is Yehoah, this is the Almighty, this is El Shaddai, but truly, this has not changed, it still fills the atmosphere, it's bouncing off the galaxies around us right now, it fills up the land, he sends forth his breath, his word, and he replenishes the earth, it's what causes leaves to grow, sun to shine, this is what causes rivers to flow, this is what causes life to exist, for surely, for truly, as I live, my glory. To feel the earth. You listen to me. You stubborn. You rebellious. You high minded. You who will not hearken unto the word of God. Who choose to walk in your own way. Hear me says the Lord. My glory shall prevail. Father's a radical pastor. He's a radical pastor. Exodus 33, 5 says, I'm not going with you guys because I'll destroy you and consume you for you surely you are a disobedient people, a stiff-necked people. What is stiff-necked? Be stiff-necked for me a minute, baby. Here's stiff-necked. Come on, I want to talk to you. Come on now. Please. Please. The ten of mercies. With loving kindness, please look at me. Please, the neck won't turn. The stiff neck, it won't yield the will. Pretty radical, eh? Sikarmo se breve ki ti brasa dahan vakis. Mafrak tu si vreme hevesist. Father's going to take you to the bitter waters. He's going to be the general that's going to trap you between a Red Sea. And the chariots are the mightiest army that exists upon the face of the earth. That's the way he is. He's going to prove you. He's going to, after you're so thirsty, you're about to die. He's going to take you to bitter water that you cannot drink. Hallelujah. As he is. 
He's going to take you and trap you between the sea and an army so he might show his mighty power, so he might prove how much he can be relied upon, so he might show you that nothing is impossible for him and nothing will be impossible for you if you would only put your trust in him. It's true. He's going to take you to the waters of Mara just to see anybody who knows that you have power over that which is bitter to change the bitter into sweet. Yes. Only one man could see the tree. Only one man could see the cross. Only one man could see God's divine provision. Well, everybody else said, let's just stone him. Let's kill him. We're not following him no more. Let us set us up a captain to take us back. The stubbornness of men, the arrogancy of men, the stiff-necked unwillingness to bend, wanting it to do it their own way. Many say in Jesus' name they do those things they do. But yet it is only out of the stubbornness of their heart that they pursue their own interest, their own understanding of his will, rather than just submitting to his plan, humbling themselves under his mighty hand that he may shape us, mold us, prove us, make us to be clay in the potter's hand to let him form us in his presence. Father's looking for those who would say, I'm holy and acceptable. I'm the righteousness of God in Him. I belong to the Almighty. Fill me, consume me, live through me. I'll go and I'll go and cast out every devil. I'll go and proclaim your word of miracles. I'll go lay down my life and preach all this gospel and all these words of life and this good news. I believe it's Habakkuk 2.14. Hallelujah. I believe it is. Is it? Is it? Look. <laughs> Papa says truly as I live. You can count on it. I'm going to tell you right now, there's a, there's a day that is coming soon that the glory of the Lord shall fill all the earth, that the knowledge of the Lord shall fill all the earth as the water that covers the sea. And that's what Habakkuk said when he went up upon his high place to see what God would say when he reproved him. Is that what Habakkuk said? That said, I don't need no riches. I don't need any fame. I don't need a, a stalled calf. I don't need a harvest or a fruit on the vine. I got a high place to stand before the Almighty. All I want is Him. Pretty radical, ain't it? What you want? What is it that you want? It's a glorious thing when you come to understand that this greatness is not found in fame but in simple obedience to the Master's word and command. Hallelujah. Just stand here praising Him. That's all I'm going to do. I'm not looking for a mass evangelism crusade and glory. I'm going to stand there and praise Him. I'm probably going to be captivated for at least the first five trillion years. Somebody's going to have to make an appointment with me out past that if they want to talk to me. I plan on dancing until I can't dance no more. And I figure I'm not going to run out of energy. I, I, I plan on shouting and screaming and hollering over the blessedness of all his righteousness, of all his goodness, of all his splendor, of that which we cannot even begin to imagine. Where every pleasure fills you at the same time, every emotion overwhelms you instantaneously. You captivated by this lie of ecstasy in him. Pretty radical, huh? That's what the Lord says. Hallelujah. You don't have to ask too many times for the river of God to flow through you. You don't have to give yourself too much over into yieldedness to prophesy, to let that which God would do begin to be expressed through you. Because let me tell you how he started doing this work that he says, truly as I live, my glory shall fill all the earth. He said, if anybody's thirsty for the reality of the divine plan, if anybody wants to be a part of that which God is doing, come and drink. Now out of your belly shall flow this river, this water, this glory, this life, this beauty, this splendor. <laughs> and it shall flow out. And these, these rivers... These streams shall flow into the mighty rivers. And these mighty rivers shall flow into the greatness of God's love. The oceans of His splendor that shall fill all the earth. I heard my dad prophesy that one night. Of course, it's actually the word of the Lord, so it doesn't ever change, does it? I have some friends of mine who basically quote their sermons 
and it'll shake you to the core. They quote them. You follow them around, all you're going to hear is quote those sermons over and again, and every time you'll be shaken to the core. Jonathan Edwards stood up. That congregational preacher stood up and read a sermon. Something that was birthed in his heart. In the fire of God. The fire of the Word. The hunger of the Spirit. The proclamations of God. Sinners in the hands of an angry God. And a nation began to shake under the power of Almighty God. And a constitution was written out as a result of it. A nation was born. A democracy was formed. It didn't happen by accident. Somebody said, oh, something took place that only happens once in 3,000 years. No, it happens every day in the land of glory. It happens every day among those who know the Almighty, who stand and behold His wisdom, who are filled with His knowledge, who come to understand how to apply that knowledge to live in this wisdom of the King. Surely, truly, as I live, says the Lord. Get ready. It's absolute. It's sovereign. It's not, a, it's not something that's conditional. It's absolute promise. It's one of those absolute promises that it does not matter if a single man outside of Jesus cooperates with the Father. It's going to happen. It's not something that's based upon your willingness to, to participate with, to take place. This is a sovereign Absolute, unconditional promise of God. Surely as I live, my glory shall fill the earth. He said, not many days from now. Joel talking in the same vein of inspiration, declaring the same thing that God had established already. Said, in the last days it shall come to pass, saith God. That I'll pour out my spirit. And you should prophesy. I'll pour out my spirit upon our flesh. You know, I've come into a realm of God of just simple faith. Where if I'm standing talking to somebody, it has nothing really to do with my own personality, has nothing really to do with an anointing in my life, has really nothing to do with the words that I know how to recite, but the reality of that's which I am connected with, the understanding that I have of what God is doing, that His Spirit is poured out upon all flesh, and understanding that and knowing that I can communicate a faith realm that belongs to God's realm, and immediately the person I'm talking to will have an experience of Him pouring out a Spirit upon all flesh. It has different expressions. It's very difficult for many people who are stuck in the ditch of religion. It's a drug. Most commonly known as religion. It's religion. It's rebellious. It's stubborn. It hates authority. It especially hates the authority of Jesus Christ. Who expresses only his who expresses his authority through his apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, which have come to be despised. Uh-huh. Which in these in these last days right now, it's it's more than just despised, it's defied. Papa told me, he said, You stand up and you speak with absolute authority. Do don't you draw back. Pick it up a couple of notches. Go ahead and shout it out a little bit longer. I demand you to command them. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Father takes it to fire. He's going to sort things out with. Said that the Lord told me, he said, and Satan shall be loose for a little season because God will always make a place for people who are rebellious and stubborn and who really do not want to do it his way. He'll make a place for them to run to if they want to get out of his command, if they want to get out of his master plan, if they do not want to be ruled under his hand. There is a place that they could run to. And after the year, after 1,000 years of being in his presence, it's amazing how these guys step, stop playing without any instruction. See, they haven't learned yet to be under authority. They're just going with as they understand it. But it's nothing new. It's what everybody primarily does. They don't know how to be sensitive to the Spirit. And then they really don't want to hook up to learn. they still stuck in that which their self-consciousness and their thoughts command. 
The Father is looking for a people that He can train and raise up in the school of the Spirit. Imagine if you were had the opportunity to live in the school of Samuel as God began to do a new thing in the earth when He raised up a new kind of prophet that took pre- the, uh, uh, the priest Eli's place. You know, Saul could have hung out with Samuel, been no problem. He chose Ichabod for his priest. He chose Ichabod for his priest. You can see him in his, you can see him in his cowardness, in his defeat, in his unwillingness to get himself up off of his blessed assurance and move out and do what God told him to do. Sitting under the pomegranate tree with his priest named Ichabod. Being comforted, being comforted by the one whom God says the glory has departed. That's pretty radical, isn't it? I'm going to stay with Samuel. I'm going to stay with where the prophet's speaking. I'm going to stay with where the Spirit of the Lord is crying out. I'm going to stay in pressing into a realm that belongs only to him coming under the master's hand, coming under the rule of his rod of iron. I love the rule of the rod of iron. I love my shepherd's staff. Uh, his, 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 his rod, it comforts me. Hallelujah. When you pass under the rod of the shepherd, that means you belong to him. He's counting you. You belong to him. You're passing under his rod. Hallelujah. The rod and the staff that comfort me. You have prepared a table before me, a place where I can feast upon the spiritual food that you would supply. The bread of heaven, the true manna, Christ Jesus. This drink, this drink indeed, this water of life that's given to me, that if anybody drinks of this water wherever they at, in obedience of fellowship and communion and with him, out of their belly shall flow this divine glory that God says, truly as I live. Truly as I live. This has all begun, not in some eschatological event of the future but in a work of grace that took place 2,000 years ago when he poured out his spirit from on high and endued us with power when we were baptized by the master the ministry of Jesus in the Holy Ghost and fire a place that you can live in if you don't run back tomorrow to your jobs and the things that the earth that you trust in. If you don't run back to the opinion of yourself and those things that you think comfort you and make you feel secure because that's what you've learned to do. That's what you're comfortable with. Look, God, we've never fought giants. Look, God, we've never come up against the sons of the giants. The Hittites are a mighty army. Look at us. We're a bunch of miserable slaves. We've been told what to do for 430 years. How do you expect us to be mighty men? We're just a rabble tag, you know, you know, ragtag group of folks that just come out of slavery. All we know how to do is work in the mud pits of Goshen and make bricks with straw and mud. All we know how to do is cry and begin to pray. Oh, God, bring deliverance. We don't know how to go and conquer. We don't know how to go and subdue. We don't know how to move in miracle faith that will change the the geography, subdue nations that will all of a sudden cause hearts to be revealed, lives to be made manifest before their very own eyes. Your life needs to be made manifest before your very own eyes. You know nothing about yourself or who you're supposed to be until your life is completely given over to Jesus. Hallelujah. Until you begin to recognize Christ in you, your confidence of glory. This is the glory that fills the land. Father, Jesus said, Father, the glory you gave to me, the glory that you said, surely as I live, my glory shall fill the earth. The glory you gave to me, I give it to them that they may be one just like you and I are one. Just like you're in me, I'll be in them. Rather, people want to get around and talk about what they think the Trinity means. It has nothing to do with what Father has in store, plans for you. Sit around and argue about the things that you don't know. He gave this for you and I to live. He gave us this opportunity so we can step in. I was talking to one of the leaders of the United Pentecostal Jesus Only Church one night. And we were just having a little bit of fellowship, talking about the Holy Ghost, the good things of God. I was talking about everything he believed in. 
I know what Bartleman believed in. And Bartleman started what he was doing. So I said, yeah, I really believe what your, what your leader believed in. Oh, Bartleman, man, have the fire of God burn in his life, didn't it? And we got to talk in, and I said, isn't it wonderful? The things of the glory, of the power, of the divine majesty of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Isn't it beautiful that it's something Father has called us to experience where we step into oneness with him, where we step into a relationship with him. So Jesus comes and lives on the inside of us just like Father was li living and abiding inside of Jesus. If you want to understand how Father was living and abiding in Jesus, you got to understand how Jesus is living and abiding in you. Ah, hallelujah. We had a Holy Ghost meeting. He was one of the leaders of the United Pentecostal Jesus, Jesus only. We weren't having an argument. We were having an atmosphere, a divine glory. We were having a heavenly experience. We were having a, 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 a supernatural exchange of things that men barely understand. But Father wants us to experience by his mighty hand. People all upset by the Jehovah's Witness. I'm upset by the false witness. <laughs> There's nothing worse than a false witness. People saying this is the life of Jesus, and it ain't the life of Jesus. This is the life of the glory of God, and it ain't the life of the glory. This is the life of what it means to walk in the Holy Ghost, and it's not. That's a false witness. I want you to hear me tonight. I want you to step into the fire of his presence. I want you to step into the fire of his, of, of his glory. I want you to understand what it means to redeem the times. I want you to understand God's will and plan for your life so that you can be a part of subduing nations. If you're going to be a part of subduing nations, the first thing you're going to learn is how to be filled. You're going to learn how to come under not human inspiration. You're not going to come under religious mandate or religious expression. But you're going to come under the inspiration of the divine power of the living God that is greater than any inspiration that you've ever had from the experiences in life that you have had. Father wants his fire to burn on the inside of us. He wants his glory to be expressed through us. It's only, pos it's only possible when we are born again. It's only possible when we when we are born above, from above. It's only possible when we are born of the Spirit, when we are born of His love, when we have a witness testify that we in Him and He's in us. To where we are, are now called, every man, every woman, every boy, every girl is called to know what is the height, the breadth, the length, the depth, to know the love of Christ, to know every dimension of all that which Father Himself possesses. Amen. And it's time that you and I understand how to host His presence. It's time to build old Satan and name the bottom day. You and I learn how to be the servants of his presence. It's time for you and I to understand how easy it is to dwell and live and abide in him and have an atmosphere of divine glory to live in a realm called heaven to be translated out of this world in the kingdom of the dear son to, have to be come out from among them and be shepherd saith God and touch not the unclean thing I shall receive you. That's not Old Testament. That's New Testament. That's what Paul said concerning this gospel. Somebody said it's legalism. No, it's not. It's being in him. It's living the life. It's having, that. It's having his divine glory and power overwhelming our soul. It's having those things which he has sworn should come to pass. It's the life and experience that we live. It's time you come under the molding, shape, and hand. It's time you come under the rule. It's time you come under the rule. I tell you, those of you watching me by web, you can't come under the rule sitting in your home in your living room all t intimidated, won't come around here. You sound like the unfaithful servant. Oh, I knew you were a hard person, controlling. And I was afraid of you. So I just decided I wanted to hear God, but I want to listen on the web. <laughs> Give me a break. I knew you were an unfair person, so reaping where you did not sow. I realized you were unethical gathering where you had not laid up. Here, take back what is your own. No, sir. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you right now, you get yourself in church, you get hooked up, you get under the rule, you come under the command. Father's, Father isn't going to measure things. He's going to say, whoever's got the highest degree, whoever made the best grades in school, those are the ones that are in charge. Uh, he said, he led captivity ca captive and gave gifts unto men. He gave some PhDs, some masters of science, some idiots. I mean, come on. You, 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 it's ridiculous. He gave no giftings of which man can achieve or attain to. Besides that, those are all the teachings of demon spirits. 
God gave those who were anointed with his mantle of his presence to speak on his behalf, who, who the water courses of his glory began to be expressed to, who are given over to his word and to prayer, who would speak his word and apply it to the very need of the hour, who with, with, radical, with radical commitment. Come on now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody said, oh, I'm hyper faith. I'm super faith. I believe in command ye me, saith God. Okay, well, how about this? How about God commanding you for a few moments? How about God commanding you rather for the rest of your life? How about turn this thing around? Jesus said, if you love me, you obey me. Right. Hallelujah. You submit to that which I have purpose. You're never going to be perfected until the preacher can get in your face and holler at you and tell you where you're going wrong and say, how long do I got to put up with you? Oh, you cruel Jesus. How long must I put up with you? That's what he said. So as he didn't say that, he did. He did. How long do I have to listen to this doubt and unbelief? At one miracle after another, you guys, man, did I pick the right father? I spent all night in prayer. I'm certain this is the one you told me to pick. But this thing doesn't look very good. How many of you be, be willing to understand how beautiful it is and what a great privilege it is to be trained in all of his godliness and all of his righteousness and all of his ways. I mean, it would be impossible for you to know the paths thereof. <laughs> it would be impossible for you to know the way thereof. But the Holy Ghost himself has come to teach us to be just like him. That means you've got to change everything about you. You've got to change. Nothing can be the same. And people don't want to tell me, be told, you got to change. You don't look right, act like right. you got to change. And we say, when is it going to stop? No, it's not. When you come into all the fullness of the glory of God, and then we'll light, we'll let up. But right now, as Habakkuk said, I'm going to go up on my high place and see what the Lord says when he reproves me. I'm going to tell you right now, people think that the Holy Ghost is a defense attorney. It's, no, he's not the defense attorney. He's the prosecuting attorney. He's come to prosecute sin. That's what Jesus said. He's come to prosecute sin. He's come to prosecute righteousness. He's come to prosecute judgment. Hallelujah. How many of you are ready to be hollered out? Right here. Come right on. Here. Amen. Come on. Father's going to remember that. Yeah. Hallelujah. I'm ready to be hollered at. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, brother Morocco, you know, he called, he said, you know, I said with him having lunch the other day, he said, come scream and holler at my people for a while over in Hawaii. I mean, he knows what it's all about. He didn't, he didn't raise up so many great churches because he doesn't know what it's all about. People say, ah, it's a culture of condemnation. No, it's not. It's a culture of correction. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's going to be condemnation for you if you don't want to be corrected because if you are going to be rebellious and stubborn, you're going to be left out. You'll be outside. Why? Because Father says, truly as I live, I'm going to have my glory. I'm going to have people that will obey me. I'm going to have people like Caleb and Joshua who will do all that I've commended. Yes. Who will obey that which I've said. Who will believe in me. Who put their trust in me. Who will do it just exactly like I say. Because only Father's way will work. I'm going to do it just exactly like he says. I'm not going to add to it. Somebody said, oh, I'll do that. Oh, well, you're going to have to first learn how to do exactly what the pastor says. That's right. Oh, we can't do that because of this one and that one. Forget about this one and that one. Oh, I'm afraid somebody's going to take advantage of me and lead me in the wrong way. Yeah, with that fear, the devil's got hold of you. You know nothing about the love of God. You know nothing about his supernatural hand of grace and glory. You know nothing about the one who loves you so much that you cannot ask him for a, a, a piece of bread and end up with some stone or fish and end up with some snake. Huh? Or some eggs in the morning end up with some scorpions running around on your plate. How am I supposed to eat this? They're going to sting me. Just put it in your mouth. They're going to sting me and I'm going to die. I don't worry about it. Yes. Yes. Father says, as I live, surely as I live, truly as I live, absolutely, this is absolute. I'm, I'm, I'm in the preparation. Hallelujah. <laughs> See, right now, we are being taught by the Holy Ghost how to flow <laughs> in the ministry of Jesus who, in signs and wonders, hallelujah, <laughs> in demonstration of the Spirit so that these works and greater works can be manifested in our life. But there's something higher going to happen. 
Something higher going to happen. We're going to make a transition from that now to step over into a glorified body, into a resurrected body to see him as he is because we're going to be like him. Now to take on a whole other dimension of the anointing to rule and reign alongside of him over for a thousand years over the nations of this earth in his holy city. Father says, truly as I live. The glory that he has announced Stay a glory that he has announced, that he has sworn, that he has said as, as truly as I live, shall, this glory shall fill all the earth, has begun first and foremost within the relationship that Jesus described in John chapter 17, 21, 23. When do you seize that? Listen to me. When is that important than your necessary food? When is that more important than your clothing? Because when you step over in this realm, when you step over in this faith realm with God, you won't think about your food no more. You'll all of a sudden begin to experience why it is that you are empowered not to give any thought for what you so wear. Because you're under the care of an almighty God who speaks things right out of the atmosphere, right out of the thin air. And it manifests itself in all of his glory and splendor. Whatever he says, it all came by his spoken word made from things that are unseen, things that are invisible. Oh, yeah. You can rebel if you want, but I'm going to submit to his plan. You can believe what some scientist said if you want. I'm going to believe what Almighty God said. You, 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 huh? you, can believe, you can believe what some book you read declared. I'm going to believe what Jesus declared when he, when he suffered, bled, and died at Calvary. When he rose up the third day from the grave and was seen by many witnesses who was able to change even the most stubborn and hard and zealous religious men after the faith of Judaism. Saul of Tarsus is proof of the resurrection in such a radical way. How he fully surrendered his life to God so that Jesus could be revealed in him. He's the perfect type of me and you. He's the perfect example for every Christian today. He was one who was not walking with Jesus when Jesus was alive upon this earth. He's the one that just like you and I met him after that he rose up from the dead, ascended at the right hand of the Father, was exalted in the heavens. He's the one who shows us that, yes, all that Jesus said, here's what it looks like. He is the practical application of salvation. He's the one you and I need to get up off of our, uh, off of our uh, lukewarmness, off of our uh, uncertainties, off of our empathies, and all the other things that are following him, doing what Papa commanded you know, I, Reinhard Bonnke said, you know, God can do anything. He's the master of the universe. He created all things by a spoken word. But there's one thing he cannot do, and that is get you up off your couch. Get you up off of your comfort, off of, that what you, off of, off of those things that you have become secure with. God is calling you. He's given to you a great gift. I mean, right last Sunday morning, I think it was one of those moments where God separates. I pray that you've listened to the tape, to the YouTube. It's just there available to you. I, th I pray that you understand that the, watch out, the fire is burning. Things are going to start bubbling over. Father's not letting nothing sit around unrevealed. The light's manifesting everything. Everything is going to come out. Every, every, every wound, every hurt, every rebellious spirit, every lying thing, every false thing. He's going to reveal it. He's going to make it known. Why? So he can heal you. So you can heal you, but you got to be willing to be healed. When you grab a hold of the reality that when you begin to enter into this affectionate relationship, you begin to enter into a place of being empowered. Hallelujah. Jesus said, It's not I that does the work, but the Father who's in me. <laughs> now all of a sudden we can say, It's not me that does the work, but it's Jesus. That is in me. When all of a sudden the glory and the majesty of the light that he's given is more important than the altered, the alter ego, huh? the alternate life that you could live. The one that's full of self-interest. The one that's going to say, I'm not really even that interested in the master's work. I'm not really interested that much in the master's kingdom. I've got my own work to do, my own business, my own interest, my own life pursuit. People, God's calling you. 
He's looking for people who with total abandonment will forsake everything to come follow him. He's looking for a people that no matter what he does, no matter how he gets right into the midst of your life, no matter how he sorts you out. I've watched so many people that God came to sort them out and all they did was rise up to defend their own self. As though, they, as though that their opinion is just as important and just as valid as anybody else. And what they did to the preacher, they would do to the Holy Ghost himself. Because that's the way it works. They, what they did to the preacher, they do to Jesus himself. Because that's the way they work. They're going to cry unfair. They're going to cry out against God and say that he's not a just judge. <clears throat> that he's hard. That he's controlling. That he's unethical. Huh? That he gathers where he did not lay up. All of us a lie. Fathers come to correct us. So many people are willing to confess that if you're a son and you're going to be a son and received as a son by the father, then you're going to be chastened. And sons receive chastening. They receive correction. It's bastards that refuse to be corrected. It's the proper application of the word. When somebody's going to be rebellious, we can cry out, there's a bastard. Huh? Are you listening to me? So I say he's cussing. I'm not either. I'm not either. I'm just, just I'm describing the disgusting situation that men find themselves in we pray in Jesus name that tonight you'll come under the rule of the king of kings and the rule of the Lord of lords that the promise that he's given that he will fill the earth with his glory you will participate with and his glory will be seen through you and that is the glory of the only begotten son living and abiding in you that is only possible to be expressed through our lives by the working and operation of the Holy Spirit himself Hallelujah. Somebody says, how do I step into this? Well, you know, Paul still looks at people and he says to them, his first thing he says is, he was, you know, somebody needs, some theologian needs to correct his theology. Because as soon as he sees these disciples, the first thing he says is he doesn't talk to them about Jesus. He talks to them about the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. You listen to me. You Holy Ghost fighters that are listening right now by the web or the YouTube, you listen to me. Go to Acts chapter 19, you'll find out in verse 2 that what I'm saying is true. He didn't talk about Jesus, he talked about the Holy Ghost. When Jesus came, they wanted to talk about the Father. Huh? They didn't want to talk about Jesus. Jesus, now that Jesus is gone, everybody wants to talk about Jesus instead of talking about the Holy Ghost. And he said the Holy Ghost. He sent the Spirit of truth to lead us and to guide us into all the truth. To speak through us. With his very own voice. I don't, I, my bull said I tell you. My langara pull, pull. I believe that, the, I believe that the ministry of the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher is not in the hand ministry. I don't believe it. I believe it's the mouthpiece ministry. I believe it's the headship ministry. I believe it's communing with the living God. Uh, that's just the way the, the Lord set it up. It's not of us, it's of God. We have no sufficiency of ourselves. Our sufficiency is of God. He told us to go and take no thought for what we would say, but it would be the Spirit of our Father speaking through us, and we can trust in those things He said. We, if we cooperating with Him in honest and sincere heart and speaking His word, then you have no proof against us that we do not declare those things which He is speaking. The only evidence that you would have, possibly, that we are not the mouthpiece of God is if we begin to declare things that are not written in the Word. But if we declare in the Word of God, my goodness, you better listen. You better listen because God made us the ones who would come and take His Word and personally apply it to your life and contrast and compare whether or not you're meeting the standard. Hallelujah. Whether you being conformed to the image of Christ or being conformed to the image of man. Whether you come out uh, from among them and not being conformed to the world, but being transfigured by thinking different about yourself. Right. Hallelujah. You're never going to walk in the image that God made when he created your righteousness and true holiness until you start thinking different. Amen. People just want to keep it all renewed in the spirit of your mind. Listen, let me put it to you in the layman's terminology. Start thinking different. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. 
People want to think the same about themselves. They want to just have a common, ordinary life. They want to just live it the way that they think is possible to live. They, they want to say all the miracle realm is a realm too great for them to live in. They want to look at the impossibilities of the situation, the insurmountable disease, the insurmountable problem, the insurmountable financial issues. Satan will keep you on his string with the money thing for the rest of your life and, and damn your soul in hell because you can't serve God and mammon. Now, come on, you listen to me. There are too many people. Listen, God is not an unjust God. He hates diverse weights and measures. I'm going to tell you right now, you're going, your life is going to be well weighed in the scale. And it's the, the balance on the scale is Jesus. Somebody said, we want to be balanced. You're going to get balanced. You better get, right, you better get right with God and start acting like Jesus. Then you balanced. Amen. Otherwise, you found wanting. Are you right now? You understand? You found, oh, you, found oh, you don't have enough weight on the scale. <laughs> Hallelujah. Somebody said, oh, I'm just weak and feeble, and I'm not able, and I don't know how to. Listen, forget about all that. you weak and feeble and not able and don't know how to. It ain't about that. It's not by might, it's not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. And you know what? Uh, the spirit of the Lord said that in Zechariah chapter 4 in the context of the Lord. The seven, eyes, the seven spirits of the Lord as, 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 they, as, as though they were the eyes of the Lord. They go to and fro throughout the earth. And his eyes go to and fro throughout the earth so he can look at, uh, and, and, uh, at those who are going to participate with him, fully put their trust in him, even when they're facing the insurmountable obstacles, like Caleb was facing insurmountable obstacles, and just like uh, Joshua was facing insurmountable obstacles, and we uh, believed him, go with them. He said, those folks I'll make champions out of, I will empower them. I'm looking for somebody to show myself great upon, show them myself mighty. Upon their behalf. When God talks about mighty, he's talking about Kratos power. Kratos, that is his supernatural working where he throws down everything that opposes him. Everything contrary to his will. Everything that's in the way of his miracle. Hallelujah. I mean, you're just going to have to stand up and speak. You're going to have to stand up and not be moved. You're going to have to learn how to grab a hold of the shield of faith because there will be times that things will happen and it will be seeming like it, it seemed like it's a bit delayed. It seemed like you should have water by now instead of it being bitter. seems like you should have been led a different way than being trapped here between the, the Red Sea and the chariots. But I'm going to tell you right now, if you'll stand there well, be, being strong in faith, having the shield of faith, quenching all the imaginations, your biggest enemy. Your biggest enemy. Imaginations run wild. Huh? Imaginations where people create all of this fictitious stuff uh, in their own minds. And Satan gets in there and takes advantage of it. And all you can do is sit there in a prison of human effort and human ability and human reasoning. God said cast it down. God told you to cast it down. He said the weapons of your warfare are not carnal. They're not natural. They're not something that you can sit and talk yourself into by reason, figure out. He said it's God power. He said it's God power. God gave you God power. God gave you his glory. His glory is manifested by his, by his, his power. I'm going to tell you right now, his glory was seen when his presence came down upon the tabernacle where he stood there in the midst of his people and said, Yippee, I get to be with you guys again. You guys get to be with me because we got this thing all figured out. Now we've got and set in place the master plan of the Redeemer who's coming. And now you're putting your faith in this, that, with this that which will bring forth the coming Redeemer who will be shaped under the law. Hallelujah. Habakkuk Pasha, he would be shaped under the law. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Born of a woman. Hallelujah. Casa bombre de casaya. Hallelujah. Habokara. Habaterahaya. Rabba You might as well enjoy the presence of God. You might as well enjoy the presence of God because if you go ahead and enjoy the presence of God, who knows? You might just go ahead and do the will of God. Now you might as well enjoy the presence of God when you understand it's only by His Spirit, not by your might and power. If you walk around in all, all the things that you can feel and understand, that's your might and power. Yeah, if you're walking around in absence of, of His presence and not enjoying fellowship with Him, you're going to be, it's hopeless. It's hopeless. I know how it is. People will get into situations where their disease, their sickness, their problem, their weakness becomes bigger than everything else. That's all they can see everywhere they look, all they can see. 
is a child born with a disease. All they can see is a financial need that has left them in poverty. All they can see is, is, a, is a temptation, a spiritual weakness that continually slips them up. They don't know how to stand against the powers of darkness. But Father wants you to turn over into a place where you begin to enjoy His presence. You know what? You know, I've seen the Lord. And, but I've only seen Him in a vision, in a dream. I'm going to go and see Him. I'm going to talk with Him. I know of men like Brother Hagen and you know, I you say that. A lot of times I say that. People just turn off the television or rather turn off the, the monitor and walk out of the meeting. I knew it. I knew, I knew something was wrong with him. <laughs> they have no idea. I mean, goodness gracious, you want the rest of the mess, go with it. I'm telling you, God's raised up people. But, you know, he, he sat down and he talked with the Lord Jesus. I mean, my goodness, I, I, some people told me he was 18. I, I heard it was 21 times they talked with the Lord Jesus person one time over two hours. My, my, that, I, I'm... Come on, give me a break. I'm, I'm interested to sit down and talk with Jesus. I don't need to sit down and talk with him or see him to believe in him, you know. But in though, I, though I see him once in a vision and a dream, yet I know him more than that, more in another way than by just what I saw. I know his presence. I can I tell you where he's, I can tell you where he's moving, what he's doing. I can see when people are yielded to him, when they're allowing his influence in their life. I can see when people are walking in their own human realm because so many people would rather walk in the sensual realm and, and, and go with what they see with their eyes, hear with their ears, touch with their hands, smell with their nose, taste with their mouth, feel with their instincts, understand through their rational experience, through their ability to calculate. And in that, you abdicate, you say no to the realms of the Spirit, the mind of Christ, a sense, a sense realm, that, uh, the, realms of the, uh, the sense realm of the Holy Ghost, the insight of the Spirit, the which, gives, which comes and functions in the word of knowledge, in the word of wisdom, to see what eyes not seen, to hear what ears are not heard, to hear Father speak. To, to function in the, the, that wonderful realm called the prophetic realm. Not the pathetic realm, but the prophetic. Because there's been lots of pathetic. Because there's been nothing but human beings. And God said when man speaks presumptuously, that isn't good. He's talking about a prophet. When a prophet speaks presumptuously, regard him not. In other words, he speaks something out of his own head. <laughs> And, and that presumptuous, and the, the Hebrew word from which that is derived means to be lifted up in yourself. It means to be lifted up in yourself. And in, in a perfect, perfect application, to be lifted up in yourself against God. Did you know that every sin is treason? How many of you know that sin is treason? Sin, say, sin is, treason. Sin is, treason. Sin is treason. I'm done being a treasoner, a treasonous person. I, I say, I'm done being a Benedict Arnold. I'm done with being Benedict Arnold in the kingdom of God. Say, I'm done with being Benedict Arnold. I mean, the, the, the guy, you know, who we don't know whether he did it or not, but, you know, he's got the rap. <laughs> okay. <laughs> How many of you know that covenant breaking is treachery? A couple of people know that. How many of you know that covenant breaking is treachery? It's treachery. Say, I don't like them anymore. You know, you don't, and well, you don't like them anymore. They don't, you don't like them anymore because somebody done told you what you're supposed to do. Because somebody just told you, just told you where you are wrong. Uh, somebody, just, somebody just told you to shut up and sit down. <laughs> Hallelujah. I don't like to be told to shut up and sit down. Hack, you should have some respect for me. No, we're going to have respect unto God. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Somebody say, can't you say it nicer? I don't know. Ask Jesus. Huh? Ask him. Ask him to say things a bit nicer. Ask, huh? Ask, I know a lot of people. I know a lot of prophets of God, like John the Baptist. Can't you say it nicer? Huh? My goodness gracious, the way he talked. Father, Father, Father tells it like it is. He breaks it right down for the full reality of, of how terrible it is. Sin and rebellion is a terrible thing. Listen. Yeah, obstinance is a terrible thing. God has given to us the privilege of being trained up in all of his nature and splendor. That means everything about you and me have to change. Can, is this hard to get? 
Father has said, I'm not having rebellion. He said this in the light of people saying, we're not going to do what you say to do. We don't believe you have the power to get to fulfill uh, what you've declared. We believe you brought us out here to be slaughtered. We believe we're going to get killed obeying you. Somebody's going to die following you around. Read it. Read Numbers chapter 14. Read it. That's what they were saying. Huh? You have to understand whether or not you're acting like that. You've got to give me enough proof to convince me you're any different, says the Lord. He said, I want to see fruits of righteousness. I want to see proofs. I want to see a witness. Those who are walking the Spirit, live by the Spirit, they don't fulfill the lust of the flesh. Hallelujah. Those who have the mind of Christ make no provision to fulfill the lust of the flesh or any, any, any things that belong to a demonic world. He said, ah, we sinners, we're going to sin more or less every day. You rebellious. You're a liar. You have been, you've come under a, decept, a deceiving power from an angel of darkness. And this city is filled with it. And this region is filled with it. Are we all unrighteous? There's none righteous. No, not one. Twisting the scripture when God has declared his righteousness over a thousand times. God has declared his joy and the joy of the Lord over, you know, well over um, 567 times. And with some of the various different derivations of that you could say over 700 times and then you find one verse of scripture blessed is they that are mo that mourn and people can go with the one scripture on mourning and abandon the 700 scriptures on joy and rejoicing it's just absolute insanity God doesn't want a sad countenance that is not a pro that is not appropriate he said because you have not served me with gladness and joy I'm turning you over to your enemies people don't understand how, how what a good pastor father is I pray in Jesus' name you'll spend a year just underlining God's pastoral actions and pastoral manner. Uh, God, I'm both every day as he was the shepherd of Israel. I'm telling you, I know just how to be a pastor. I read the Bible. I've read it again and again and again and again and again and again, and I continue to do so. And you're doing it now in 90 days. I hope you're keeping up. You discover you can actually do it in 30 days. Somebody going, oh, my goodness, we having to spend an hour now. That sounds like 30 days. Oh, my, we have brought it down now. It's three hours a day. Well, oh, would it, oh, God, help us if it comes to that. <laughs> that you should spend three hours a day in the Word. Uh -huh. I'm going to tell you right now, I have been blessed by the Lord to be able to travel with some great ministries and to be under the experience of the anointed God, being raised in ministry where dad's been doing church seven days a week. Ridiculous. <laughs> Two, three times a day. He just wants to preach. He's a preaching machine. Hey! Truly. That's all he wants to do. Pop, just tre preaching, preaching, preaching. And, and I'm so blessed to live in the presence of God. But I'm going to tell you, and, and be around the mighty men of God. But I'm going to tell you something. There, I have never experienced the presence of God and the impartations of the Lord like just being there reading his word, sitting camped out in the word. The Word, my goodness gracious, the Word, hallelujah. The Word is a glorious realm. People, you're going to have to spend some time. You need to read through a dozen or more times. You need to come on now. We have a plan right here. If you take, uh, you take this, I, I took the, you know, most of you know about this particular book. I took the uh, sequential events, the life of Jesus Christ, which is, it's not a harmony of the Gospels, it's a sequential events of the Gospels. And I took the four Gospels, just as they are, and I spent six years, and, and these are my, this is my bibliography on the back, and all these scholars and theologians, and we analyzed, I analyzed along with them, by the help of the Holy Ghost, to put it in a sequential event so you can sit down and easily read the New Testament, I mean the Gospels, the four Gospels, in ten days. You know what happens if I right now, anywhere, anytime, if in my room, my bedroom, my living room, wherever I'm at, if I open up this book, as soon as I open up, I feel the anointing. I, I, there's so many people I've handed this book to. I remember the first time I handed the book to, I handed the book to Joel Stockstill, and he just stood there and it shook under the power of God. He said, my goodness, what's the, the, power, the anointing of God's upon this thing. And now, you know, listen, because the word of God is anointed. The word of God is the, is, is, is the, 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 the glory of his own 
thoughts and the glory of his own will fully being expressed to us. And it's where you and I get to understand what he made us when he recreated us anew in Christ Jesus. I mean, and when you begin to hook up with that realm, it's a spiritual realm. See, his word, people just think it's black ink on white paper. No, it's spirit and life. It's spirit and life. It's food. It's food. God said, I'm going to teach you. I'm going to take you to the wilderness. I'm going to teach you that man doesn't live by bread alone so that you'll learn that you live by my word. If you want to live, people don't want to. People say, I don't know how to walk in the life of God because you haven't learned how to live. <laughs> you learn how to live when you understand that you don't live by bread alone, but you live by every word which proceeds out of the mouth of God. It becomes to rule your heart and rule your mind, and all of a sudden you think different. You act different. You believe stuff that nobody else believes. You're able to interact with Father when everybody else is isolated from Him. You're in faith when everybody else is in doubt. You go, what's wrong with you people? As, as, as Jack Cole used to say, my God, what's wrong with you people? True. As you'd pull a cancer off somebody's neck. I mean, I've got the recording of him saying it. I love it. I like to just, just take that one little th phrase of Jack Cole and just go ahead, put it on tape, and just put repeat. And you just hear him going, my God, what's wrong with people? My God, what's wrong with people? And it hits you after a while. And you say, I'm not acting that way no more. Amen. As the miracles and signs and wonders and glory of God was being manifested, all people just sit there. Why? They did. They could not respond to the Spirit. And all the preachers are upset and, uh, and kicking the can around and saying, my God, what's wrong with you people? They don't realize they've not been born of the Spirit yet. Just because they all sitting in church and been sitting there for 40 years don't mean they're born of the Spirit yet. They just been inducted into religion. They just been inducted into, into a form of godliness, denying the power thereof. You can tell when somebody's born of the Spirit. They respond. Deep calls unto deep. Hallelujah. When the water's there to drink. You know, my goodness, this is the way God's got it set up. Somebody said, How hard is it? You walk up to Christ Jesus, who is the rock, and you say, Give me to drink. That's all you got to do. You walk up to the rock, Christ Jesus, and you say, give me to drink, and the water pours out. The water of the Spirit pours out. You just reach over there and go, and out of that, poof, rivers start flowing out of it. Rivers, I mean, expressions, unlimited expressions of God. That is a floodgate. It's a floodgate. It's a floodgate. It'll knock anybody down standing in front of you. I tell you right now, it's a floodgate. God said, surely, as I live. Surely, as I live, I'm going to have an obedient people who will cooperate with me, who will be covenant partners with me, who will stand here in this greatness that I've called them to stand in, who will do great exploits, who will command the moon and the sun to stand still, who will say, I'm as strong today as I was the first day I came into this land. Give me this mountain. I'm going to go. So you know what Caleb did? Caleb picked the toughest spot in all of Canaan. He picked the toughest spot in Canaan. He picked Hebron. Hebron was the place that Abraham purchased for Sarah's burial tomb. He would not let, uh, he would not let uh, it be given to him. He purchased it with money. It was twice his possession. For it was already given to him by the inhabitants of the land. Then he, po then he bought it by possession. And now here it comes a third opportunity to possess it. What Satan did was he took that which was owned by God's man who God had placed his covenant with, who, who the land was being given to Israel because of him. He placed the three sons of Anak there to fortify it that anybody who was of the Spirit of God could not get in. Hebron was a fortif the most fortified city of Canaan. Caleb said, I'm taking that one. You guys, you take the midgets. I'm taking the giants. It took somebody. It took somebody who was willing to believe God absolutely. Whether we live or whether we die, it does not matter. 
The problem is, is too many people are holding on to their own life. What will you give in exchange for your life? Your life is on the slave block right now. It's going once. It's going twice. It's going three times. Sold to yourself or to Jesus. You have to understand. Your life, your soul is on the auction block of eternity. You're going to have to decide what you're going to exchange your soul for. There are some people who exchange their soul just because they are unwilling to submit. They want it their own way. Their father and their mother was defiant. Their grandfather and grandmother was defiant. Their great-grandpa and great-grandma was defiant all the way back to Adam. And it's a demon power that rules and reigns their life. They've never forsaken it. That stronghold's never been broken. And they'll exchange the soul for the, for the preservation of their own opinion, their own interest. Huh? Dear people, I tell you, my dear brother, people already marked. People always talk about the mark of the beast. But I tell you right now, all that is is in ancient times, a tyrant would literally brand his slaves. He would brand them like we brand cow. O1, A01, A02, A03. He'd brand them with his number, his brand. Forever they would be his slave. Satan will be worshiped. He demands to be worshiped. He's, he's had it in him for a long time. You'll see him rise up with everything that he can possibly do to be worshipped. He's commanding you right now. And you're going to have to decide what you're going to do with your life. There's only one place of defense. There's only one place of safety. The righteous run in and they are saved. Yes. The name of the Lord is a high tower. The place that God has provided for us in Christ Jesus. Come on in. I'm telling you, step over the line. The gangplank is down. Come on in. It's time to get in now. Don't wait for the first raindrops to fall upon your head. It's time to get in now. Hallelujah. He cannot put his sickness on you. He cannot put his disease upon you. For God said he wanted to be glorified in your body and in your spirits. And he says, truly, as I live, my glory shall fill all the earth. Sin and iniquity cannot rule and reign over you. Sin shall have no dominion over you. Christ Jesus is in charge. He is master. Is the Holy Ghost that we give all dominion and power to. And to Him be our glory and power and dominion. Both now and forever for He has redeemed us with His blood. He has made us His priests and His kings. And we shall reign for a thousand years. I asked the Lord one time, I can't tell you. I'll have to leave that one for later. Oh, Papa's invited us in. He has empowered us with his own ability. He's given us all power and might. He said, be strong in, by his servant uh, and Apostle Paul, be strong in the strength of the Lord and the power of his might. You talk about empowerment. You know, I was laying, I, was, I, I believe I was laying in bed one morning and, and I heard the Lord say, Satan goes about as a roaring lion seeking whom may be, he may devour, but my eyes go to and fro throughout the earth looking for someone I may empower. And I said, Father, I'm, I'm it. To hear. Do it through me. Don't look beyond me. Oh, God, look over here. Father, it ain't about me. Anyway, it's about you. I'm not making a judgment call based upon who I am and what I can do. I'm making a judgment call based upon what he said he would do if I would believe. That's why I can stand up with boldness and say, right here, this is the man you've been looking for. Here I am. God, send me. 
You know what you've got to have before you can so respond to him? Because Isaiah, having encountered God, said, My goodness, I'm a sinful man. I got unclean lips living in the, in the, in the midst of a people with unclean lips. God said, I got your, I got your cure. He said, Serve him. Go get a call from off the altar. And with his uh, a call from off the altar, he could pure his sin and purify his iniquity and make him clean. How much more by the blood of Jesus? If the seraphim, who's so holy, 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 but yet he cannot with his own hands, his own being, he has no right, he's not sacred enough. To touch the coals from off the altar, he must get, he must get the forks. He must get the coal handlers to go over there. The instruments to sanctify to touch it. And he reached over there with the coal clamps, grabbed the coal from off the altar, and he flew to the lips of Isaiah. He says, now you are purged, and your iniquity is taken from you. Now a man's got boldness. Now a man can stand up and say, I'm it. Send me. I'll go. I'll do it. We'll do great exploits. We'll stand in your strength and your power. See, reality of it is, as Paul is telling us, there's no way you're going to stand against the devil unless you know how to receive the strength of the Lord and the power of his might. There's no way. People don't understand it. They think they can just go out there and do it in religion. They think they can just go out there and do it in their own strength and effort and understanding. You fell. He deceived the mighty angels that stood around God, beholding Father's glory for eons. What is, well, you and I are no match for his craft and deceit. Only in Jesus do we find safety. <laughs> Only in Jesus do we find this place of strength. Hallelujah. E, but communing with him, living by him, his flesh is meat indeed, his blood is drink. It is the means by which I know I have now this absolute authority and by it can walk in his divine humility. It's this place where I can have such boldness. There's too many people with false humility and they want to stand in the place that God has given us right to stand and say, you my mouthpiece. You speak all my words. I make you my covenant partner. I'm going to do it through you. Yeah. All false humility has to leave now. Now all of a sudden we're going to find true humility that says, I submit to you, word, O oh God. Ah, if a coal from off the altar handled by a seraphim can purge man of his sin and take away his iniquity, what can the blood of Jesus Christ offered by the living God himself and applied to our life by his own hand do for you and me who will believe? Purge our conscience from, from sin. Purge our lives from every thought of iniquity. Purge us from every offense so that we have no more conscience or sense of sin. Send me. I'll go. I'll go. I'll go. I'll go. There has to be the encounter. Otherwise, these things never become real. I used to tell my wife all the time about a realm she could step into to where there would be no self-consciousness. You wouldn't even think about people, what their thoughts were. You wouldn't even think about what you're saying. It was with total abandonment and total freedom. You would stand in a place of joy unspeakable and a floodgate would be opened up from your heart and these words would come flowing out and with every word you would feel the thrill of divine life. But you can talk about all you want and to be able to sit and listen. But one day when you experience, you go, whoa, this is amazing. This is, whoa. What is this? The glory. Furabasa is the glory. It's his glory. It's his glory. We have this glory right now in these earthen vessels. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. We have Christ in us, our confidence of glory right now. Are you confident about his divine manifest power in your life? Are you willing? You just have to ask yourself, am I willing? Am I willing to leave it all? To have no more desire for anything. I mean, it's not that you have to leave your job. It's just you have to leave your trust in your job. It's not that you have to empty your bank account. It's just that you've got to be willing to. 
It's not that you can't, you know, enjoy some things in life. It just can't be meaningful to you really anymore. It doesn't really matter anymore. My dear friend, Brother Yun, they finally talked to him into going on vacation. And they're going to send him to a place to go on vacation. And him and his wife, Darlene. And so they got a really remote place out in a nice village. I believe it was in Italy. I can't remember exactly where it was. He goes in there. And the whole hotel gets saved. The owner of the hotel gets saved. They start church and they, they just went for a three-day vacation. They started a church in the hotel. Everybody's gathered around the table. The owner of the hotel won't let him pay his bills, won't let him pay for any food because he'd been, he just now met the master. I mean, what happens to you when you have an encounter that changes every dimension about your character, your nature, your disposition, how you think about yourself, what you want in life? Where your desires are, your ambitions, <laughs> your meaning, your value. <laughs> Hallelujah. When you, when you encounter Jesus and you see the riches of his glory. Oh, mama, God, I tell you. Papa wants you and I to have the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. So that our eyes can be open, so that we can begin to see more than Elisha's servant saw when he saw that the heavens were filled with the glory of God, his angel, his chariot, his mighty host. He wants us to see something that goes far beyond that. When our eyes are open to behold who we are in him and the inheritance that he has in us, what he brought to pass, what he created through the blood and body of Jesus. When he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand to cause us to see the exceeding greatness of his power that has been given to us according to the working of his mighty power, what God created when he created you and me in Christ Jesus, is beyond supersedes greater than anything he ever created before. Man in his human nature is deformed. Deformed, grossly, hideously deformed by sin. Father recreated us in his image, which is his glory. Jesus being the express image of his person and upholding all things by his power <laughs> has given to you an opportunity and me an opportunity to be conformed into his image. People, I just want you to understand you're going to have to come under the rod. God's going to call you out. I tell you, I love being around the prophets. I, I don't duck. I say, what you see? What you, you see any, do you see anything over here? What's God saying to you? Let, let me have it. Tell me what God wants to say to me so I can more cooperate with the fullness of his plan. Tell me what God would say when he corrects me. I don't want to hear what God would say when he would just talk about what he's purposed to do. I know it's great. I want to understand what's in the way of me doing what he's purposed for me to do. What's God got to say so I can get corrected, so I can get straightened out here, so I can cooperate. People want to duck and hide. Run. As soon as the glory comes, they want to run and hide. But they're naked. They're naked. They're shamed. I'll break the spirit of fear off you. i break the spirit of intimidation off you. i break every, every form of, of human Influence and demonic influence off you now in Jesus' name by the authority of his word and of his spirit so that you can now be free to be instructed by the Holy Ghost uh, to walk in his divine power and his correction. As many as are led by the spirit, they the sons of God. Understand, those who are not led by the spirit are not the sons of God. Those who do not have fellowship with me do not know him because I have fellowship with him. And everybody who knows him, I have fellowship with them. I have fellowship with them. Somebody said, you have the right to say that? Yes, I do. I do. Because I'm the real thing. 
I'm a real genuine redeemed son of almighty God born of the spirit born of the word and born of the resurrection and I love God more than I love anything else I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm the temple of the Most High right over here. And I'm telling you, anybody else that has such a, uh, such a walk, such a transformation, we won. Because we all won with him. I'm fellowship with him, fellowshipping with him. They go out from among us that they may be manifested that they are not of us. Satan shall be loose for a little season so that they can have a place to go out from among the camp of God's people who have been under his rule for a thousand years. You know what what a great move of God is when we're living under the rule of Jesus for a thousand years? It's when Father comes to visit. When Father comes to visit. Wow. It's those special days that Papa comes. And after that, people will go out from among them. And the first thing that they'll do is they'll hate the saints of God. They'll want to make war against his saints and against his anointed ones. Isn't that crazy? People say, how is it possible? I say, it's possible by the same way it's possible now. Right now I'm saying, how is it possible? Right now, as I'm saying, how can you leave this glory? How can you go and depart and go back into the world and fellowship with your chaos and your hell and your misery and your suffering and your pain and the pablon of religion? Hallelujah. I'm telling you right now, I see God making some of you some radical preachers right now. You're getting formed by the Spirit of God. Listen to me, I tell you, you can't sit around listening to this happening and not not catch it. It's true. It's the way it works. Hallelujah. I mean, that's, that's, hallelujah. Father's here tonight to melt the hardest heart. He's here tonight to break the stronghold of ignorance. Do you know the definition of ignorance is to not believe in Jesus? That is the definition of ignorance. Let me tell you what stupid means. To sit here in the presence of the Lord and not respond. (laughs) Because it's from the word stupor, to be unconscious of anything around you. Stupid is from the word stupor. How are you in a stupor? When you're in a stupor, you're stupid. You're unconscious of what's going on around you. Tonight, and just standing there and show you, Jesus said, Jesus said, Jesus said, Jesus said, Jesus said to us that he would cleanse us with hyssop and we should be clean. He should wash us and we should be whiter than snow. The hyssop is the means by which you dip into the blood and sprinkle it upon the people. I just ask you tonight, have you been sprinkled? Has, has an event happened to you greater than happened to Isaiah when a seraphim took a coal from off the altar and touched his lips? Has God, the eternal word, who was manifested in the flesh and called Christ Jesus, Yehoshua, or in other words, God's mighty salvation? Yehoshua, when Moses looked at Osea, he said, it's like he was saying, I'm going to declare you to be a type of Christian, a type of Christ. I'm going to call you by the name of the one whom I have seen afar off who would be the redeemer for all mankind. I'm going to call you by his name, Yehoshua. Yehoshua. I hear it's amazing. People say, well, we need to go back to the name of Jesus. And then they say Yeshua. Yeshua is Aramaic. It's not Hebrew. So if you're going to go back to the original name, you need to get your languages correct. You with me? It's nonsense anyways. (laughs) <laughs> because they don't care. I don't care what language you say his name in. It works powerful. <laughs> it's the same. It's the same. It's the same. It's the same. His, the power of his name is the same in every language. My heart right now, my, I'll tell you, my heart right now is crying out for North Korea. I, you know, I, I, watched, I watched the name of Jesus displayed on the banks of North Korea and Yanji, China. When my translator barely said the name of Jesus in North Korean, and that North Korean began to sob and began to weep under the power of God, I watched as the name of Jesus is the most powerful display of divine glory that exists. His name is more powerful 
than any name. I know that in the United States of America and the Western world, his name has been blasphemed among people. His name has been defamed. His name has become a scandalon. His name has become a byword because of the barrenness and the captivity of his people. But Father is going to glorify the name. You know, Moses wasn't really interceding for the people when he stood up against God and said, don't kill them. He was interceding for God. He said, Father, the Egyptians will say that you brought them out here to kill them. They won't understand who you are. The Amalekites, the Hittite, the Jebusite, they'll say that you did not have enough power. You, you, you ran out of strength, that you were not able to bring them all the way into the inheritance that you had declared. Don't do it. Don't do it for your own namesake. Oh, I pray tonight that you'll be so stirred up for his namesake, that you, you, you will live for his honor that you'll say no to sin just because you don't want to defame his name. You don't want to participate with blaspheming his name, with trampling underfoot his name and his blood. I pray tonight that you'll be stirred up with this righteous cause, this holy indignation, that the zeal of the Lord will consume you, eat you up, devour you, devour all other interests, you see. Hallelujah. Because I tell you, Father said, as surely as I live, Surely, it's not there. I just, I, I just take great, I just take great confidence in this. I just, my, 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 ain't nothing gonna change. As surely as I live, and we can, we can take the the position that we're just waiting for that day. Well, we can understand that we've already been translated into the kingdom of dear Son, and we are now a part of bringing that day to pass. We are part of participating with that day. That we actually are the first fruits. That we already get to step in it before anybody else gets to step in. He's already king. He's already crowned king. He's not going to be king one day. Right. His kingdom already exists. And wherever your king is, his kingdom is there. It's no debate. It's the reality. Tonight I pray that you begin to seek this kingdom above all other things. And his kingdom is shown and demonstrated right there as the exploits and the miracle and supernatural power that runs off every demon thing, that brings down every high look, that throws off every rebellious band, that rids the earth of sin and iniquity. I want to finish really quickly here in Psalms 104. It just hit me, Psalms 104. Just open Psalms 104. Can I have that by moment? Psalms 104. I'm so blessed to have Dad here. We're so blessed to have Dad here. We praise God. We praise God for the places which we come from. We praise God for the inheritance that we have. Our, one of our ancestors was the first American martyr. Her blood was spilled in the United States of America. She's actually in the Book of Martyrs, Fox's Book of the Martyrs. For her stand in the gospel, her name was Mary Dyer. They were, she was hung in the Boston House of Commons because she was a Quaker, shook on the power of God, believed in healing, laid hands on little babies, her and Ann Hutchinson. And Quakers didn't believe in paying tithe. The Boston House of Commons were run by Puritans. And religion said you had to pay tithe. That was the first government that we had, really, in this land. It was ruled by the church. But they weren't Holy Ghost Church. So they hungered in Boston House of Commons. And, you know, it's wonderful to have the, the, a godly heritage. You may, you may have nobody in your family. You may have nobody in your family that's ever served the Lord, but you can be the beginning of that godly yes, heritage. Sir. Because if it doesn't tell you right now, Father doesn't look back to the generations. He looks right to the heart right now. I can have the greatest uh, in, uh, heritage. I mean, my father didn't leave me money, but he left me an anointing. Amen. Amen. You know, we've been taught and raised up in good doctrine. Amen. I mean, I was probably, I wasn't too very old, and I could pretty much read, tell you the whole thing of Dake's chart and other theologians because Dad lived in the Word as a Word preacher, revivalist. I always had the privilege one day of standing up before more than 10,000 people. I was with Carlos Anacondi and Rodney Howard Brown. I'd taken Rodney down to um, 
Argentina and introduced him to Carlos and and I just was you know participating in introducing Rodney and I said you know I, I'm so blessed to be able to have spent time with Carlos he taught us how to take cities so blessed to be able to spend so much time with Rodney because he he showed us how to move people into the realms of the Holy Ghost and I was so blessed to be able to live in the house of my father who taught me how to move in revival a revivalist we praise God for that I praise God for that you I'll tell you right now it's a good I tell you right now it's the only church I'd go to you might go to another church it's the only church I'd go to I think this is the greatest church on the planet there's a lot of good churches <clears throat> My friends, my friends from, my friends like Richard Moore and others, they said, man, other revivalists I know, they said, they tell me all the time, Mark, I'm telling you right now, if we weren't in the church over here and we, I tend to run out of here, we would be in, we'd be in the abiding place. We would be in church. It's the greatest church on the planet. And I, I agree with you. You think whatever you want. You listen to lies of Satan. Say whatever you think, whatever you want. Say we don't have enough people in here. I mean, goodness, if everybody would come on one night, we'd be crowded. It'd be packed to the back walls. It's true. Everybody comes when, you know, if I get everybody to start being faithful coming to the meeting. They say, why do I need to go to the meeting all the time? Because this is where we're going to be trained and formed. This is, it's in the midst of the church that the gifts of the Spirit begin to operate, where we begin to be raised up and strengthened and empowered to be sent out. Amen. Amen. It's in the midst of a special anointing in this church that isn't in your living room, can't be in your living room. Forget about it. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. We're going to have to be some apostles, prophets, and come on. He put apostles in the church first, secondarily prophets. After that, we got some teachers and some gifts of the Spirit and some working of miracles. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Let me just read this to you real quickly. Psalms 104. The Lord says here um, in verse 10, You send forth your spirit, and they are created. Hallelujah. His Holy Spirit. That's how you and I got created. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord came upon us. Jesus said, you can't come into the kingdom of God, can't understand the kingdom of God, can't relate to the kingdom of God, can't know the kingdom of God, can't participate with the kingdom of God, can't be activated by anything that God has done until you're born of the Spirit. He sends forth the Spirit. He created us in righteousness and true holiness. After the image, after his own image, he created us. Hallelujah. That's glory. I'm telling you right now. You renew, this, you renew the face of the earth. Verse 31, the glory of the Lord shall endure forever. The Lord shall rejoice in his work. He looks on the earth and it trembles. He touches the hills and they smoke. I will sing unto the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. My meditations of him shall be sweet. Hallelujah. I will be glad and rejoice in the Lord. Let the sinners be consumed. Everybody says they sinners. I say let with God. I say let the sinners be consumed. Hallelujah. I say let the sinners be consumed out of the earth. And let the wicked be no more. Father says truly as I live. Truly as I live. All that's going to be in my land is an obedient and a willing people to cooperate with me who knows I am more powerful and stronger than any Anak, sons of Anak. How, how big is your God? How strong is he? How mighty is the Lord of hosts that you believe in? I told some people not too long ago, I said, I am certain that I serve a different God than you do. A bunch of Christians. I'm certain that you have a different God than I do. That I know a different God than you know. I pray tonight that you let God be God. That you will accept that he is your God and, and there is no greater God than him. There is no God beside him. He said he didn't know of one. Hallelujah. I pray tonight that your God's bigger than a demon. That your God is bigger than money. That your God is bigger than a sin. That your God is bigger than a shortcoming. That your God is bigger than whatever it is that's been problematic in your life. I pray tonight that your God is big enough to subdue the strongest city. To overthrow the most mighty pe of people. It's able to change 
the most adverse situation. I pray tonight that your God is faithful and merciful who keeps all of his promises. Not one of them shall fail. Not one of his words, not one of his promises shall fail. I pray tonight that you take his word as it is indeed a shield of faith, his promise, his presence. And you stand there against whatever it is that you're facing right now. Whatever opposition is up against you. And you hold up his promise. You hold up that which he declared concerning you. And said that he's going to do through you. That which he's purposed for you to be. And you quench with it every violent thought. Every fiery dart. Every attack. Every assailing thing. People have thought that the shield of faith was only to deal with the lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, and pride of life. I tell you, you need to graduate. There's bigger things to be concerned about. There's bigger things to do than decide you're not going to sin no more. It's now time to start thinking about living like God told you to live, like Jesus lived in all his greatness and splendor, taking on the host of hell and casting them out. Come on now. Somebody said, must you get so strong and spit all over the place? Well, you just feel for a few minutes this fire that I feel, and I'll just see how you act. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. I'll see how much you spit, <laughs> how much you growl. <laughs> Hallelujah. I pray in Jesus' name every one of you will be filled with a fiery word from heaven that you will allow the Spirit of the Lord to begin to issue when His glory comes upon you. The Spirit of the Lord will begin to issue forth from you, and you'll prophesy. He said, my spirit, hallelujah, shall come upon all flesh, upon all flesh, upon your servants, upon your men servants and your maid servants, upon your sons and upon your daughters. There'll be no difference. I'll take the vilest group of people, the Scythians, and I'll make them no, no different than the holy people of Israel. There'll be no difference. I'll take free men and bond men, rich men and poor men, There'll be no separation. I'll give every man the privilege, male and female. There'll be no distinction. I'm giving everybody, says the Lord, the same opportunity, the same privilege, the same call to be my heir, the same call to be co-inheritor. It's not something later, it's something now. It's also something later, but it's also something now. To stand in his beauty, to stand in his splendor, to learn by the Holy Ghost exactly how we're supposed to behave ourselves, how we're supposed to conduct ourselves, how we're supposed to speak, what manner of life we're supposed to live, what we're supposed to believe, what we're supposed to be willing to do. He'll teach you how to walk on the water. He'll teach you how to raise the dead to life again. Watch what happens. I'm telling you, I had a dream so real from heaven about 20 years ago. It's going to come to pass. I went to downtown San Diego to the morgue. And I walked into the morgue past these people trying to keep me back. And then somebody recognized me and said, no, let him in. And I pulled out all of those shelves in the morgue in downtown San Diego saying, get up, 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 get up. I was pulling the shelf, dead bodies. Get up, 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 get up. It cleaned out the place. It cleaned out the place. It wouldn't matter if somebody didn't have their head that was laying over somewhere else. They'd go pick it up and put it on. Whatever. I'm telling you, I believe it. I believe it. Father stirred me up with a plan for a missions plan to take the nation of Saudi Arabia during Ramadan. When I tell people this, they look at me like they looked at Caleb. They look at me like they looked at Joshua or they looked at me possibly like they looked at the man of Gadara. The Gadarean, the insane guy. The Lord gave me a plan for Ramadan. I'm going to do it. I'm going to get translated in and appear on the platform during Ramadan and take the mic. I'm going to get about 30 seconds. And they're going to come run for me. I'm going to disappear out of their hand. Jesus disappeared more than four times. He said he passed through their hands. That means disappear. When you've passed through a bunch of angry Jews' hands, I'm going to tell you right now, you disappeared. I'm going to disappear. They're going to be looking around. What just happened? I'm going to wait. Give them about five minutes to think about it. Maybe ten. 
they'll be going to start moving back into their thing, thinking they saw a vision, and I'm going to appear again. I guarantee you they're not going to take the mic away. All the Islam would be gathered together on Ramadan. All the radical Islamists, they would hear the gospel of Jesus in power and slain in the spirit. That's the power of God. He's well able. He's able. He's taken away their defenses. They have no more might. Their skill of war. Their bravery of heart. Stripped from them. Their right hand has lost its cunning. Their boldness has been taken. Fear possesses them. They're like little children. Huh? God's just looking for some people who believe him. To be able to believe him, you have to be... You have to be in his presence knowing that there is no more sin. There's no more separation. There's no more condemnation. There can't be any guilt. If there's any condemnation, if there's any guilt, if there's any sense of sin, if there's any sense of failure, if there's anything in you that say, I'm unclean and I'm in the midst of an unclean people, you can't go for him. You can't do this. If your heart condemn you, God is greater. But if your heart does not condemn you, oh my, 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 whatever you say is going to happen. This is the fruit. You were called. I was called. Listen, we were called and ordained by God to bring forth a special kind of fruit that only happens because we're willing to abide in a, in a, in a relationship of oneness. He ordained us to bring forth a special kind of fruit that whatever we ask the Father, that's John 15, 16, that whatever we ask the Father, the Lord will do it. Hallelujah. Sikana mesete repate. Right now, in Jesus' name, just I, I, if there's any of you who've held back, you've held back your life. If there's any of you that's reserved yourself for yourself tonight, I'm inviting you with total abandonment to turn your life over to Jesus and come follow him. He wants to take you someplace. Right. Father wants to take you out of the mud pits of whatever city you're living in. The mud pits of Goshen, so to speak. And he wants to lead you into a place of greatness in him. What will you do? What will you do tonight with your life? What will you give in exchange for your soul? Comfort, ease, self-security, false security. If the things happen that many people have prophesied will happen, it, by late 15, by late 2015, next year, America will look radically different. Your grocery store won't have groceries in it. Then what are you going to do? Your money ain't going to work. And then what are you going to do? Then you want to try to trust God and move in faith? No, that ain't the time to move in faith. Time to move in faith is right now. Time to be built up in faith is right now. Amen? Time to grow in faith is right now. It's, it's, better, it's easier to have faith not to get sick than to have faith to get sick and you know I mean, I mean to, to be to get healed when you're sick because yeah. it's tired it's hard to move over top of all that pain torment <laughs> it is <laughs> what we give in exchange for your soul because I'm telling you right now it's good I'm telling you it's going to pass away it's going to be taken away because God said I'm going to consume the sinners out of the earth the wicked will be destroyed remember no more the earth is going to be filled with his glory the, the earth, he's going to create a new heaven and a new earth wherein dwells only righteousness. All, the, all that want to do, all this partying, all this nonsense, believe that they came from monkeys and whatever else, they're all going to be gone. All the people who live rebelliously and defiantly, they're going to be gone. They'll be gone. Gone. You don't, you don't have to be afraid. You don't have to be fearful. You don't have to, nobody has to feel left out. Just get touched by the blood. One touch of his blood. One touch of his blood. And you'll be the boldest human being on the planet. One touch of his presence. And you'll be so confident concerning who you are in him. All the fear, all the torment, all the unworthiness will be gone. I want everybody to stand with me. I'm not, I don't really feel that we've done, I, I just, I feel that, I feel that people are going to flow in the gifts of the Spirit and move in the things of, 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 of the Holy Ghost here tonight, but I want to give an opportunity for anyone who has never been born of the Spirit to get born of the Spirit. Somebody said, I'm a Catholic. 
So what? So what? You think being a Catholic makes you born again? That, may, that, that, that being a Catholic gives you this confidence towards God? Does not. I'm a Baptist. I know Baptists who God actually let go to hell and see that they were on their way to hell. Come back and say, I was on my way to hell. They were down in the hell saying, wait a minute, I go to church. I'm a member of the church. And, and, and the devil just told them, yeah, but you weren't born again, so you're mine. You were never recreated anew. You still belong to me and to my power. I just, I just want to give everybody, I want everybody in here to know. Listen, you know, you can have a, such a boldness with God, you can be like Job. Said, nobody can take my uprightness from me. Hallelujah. I know my Redeemer lives. Nobody can convince me that I'm not the son of, a, son, a son of the living God. An heir with God and a joint heir with Christ Jesus, filled with the Spirit, washed in the blood. Amen. Amen. Living for Him. I've got a witness. The witness, the Holy Spirit bears witness with my spirit. We in agreement. Me and the Holy Ghost, we in agreement. Thank you, Jesus. Father's calling you. He's calling you. He's calling you to come. Father, I ask you to melt the hardest heart in this place tonight. Father, I ask you to break the power of every mind-blinding spirit right now in Jesus' name. Father, I pray that tonight the chains of doubt and unbelief and sin and iniquity will be broken off of those who do not know you that are in this place or that are watching by the web or that are watching right now on the YouTube. Father, we pray that every person that hears the sound of my voice as you're calling them to come will not delay. They will not seal their fate in hell forever. They will not seal their place among the damned to live eternity, eternally in a prison with no reprieve. But that everyone would just simply respond to the goodness of your love and to do your call. And say yes to you. I'm going to say one more time. If you've not been born of the Spirit, God demands that you be born of the Spirit. You say, well, God, God, accept me like, he, like I am. No, he doesn't. Jesus died to change you. That's God's commitment to you. Died to change you. Died to make you new. He's calling you. He's saying, won't you come? saying, won't you come? He's saying, won't you come? He's calling you, saying, won't you come? Father's made it so easy. The Lord has made it so easy. He said, you call upon the name of the Lord, you'll be saved. He said... He just made it so easy that all you got to do is take a hold of the name of Jesus. Now listen, people need to understand something. We're calling you to repentance, not just to salvation. People need to understand something. Jesus came to save sinners. Christ died to save sinners. People who don't want to sin anymore, in other words. People who want to be delivered from that mess and that misery. Tonight Jesus is calling you. Would you like to be liberated? Does, a, does the land of righteousness and holiness sound good to you? Does the land of joy and peace sound good to you? Yes. Huh? Does the land of living in his goodness, living under his, under his divine rule and protection, does that sound good to you? Yes. Then he's calling you, come, why don't you come? Why don't you call right wherever you are? And if you call upon the name of the Lord Jesus in your living room or wherever you're watching right now, it doesn't matter. In the library at the school, it doesn't matter. You call upon him, the very next thing that's going to happen to you is the power of God's going to be made manifest and become real to you. And you need to come get in church. If you're in San Diego, get here. It's the best church in the city. If you're not here, you know, if you're within 100 miles, I would drive. Just a few more minutes. Just going to wait just a few more minutes. Just gonna, I'm just going to wait just a few more minutes. Jesus is calling... He's tenderly calling, calling for you and for me. He's there on the portal. He's waiting and watching, 
watching for you and for me. He says, come home, come home. You who are weary, come home. There on the portal, he's waiting and watching. There he is, he's tenderly calling, calling for you to come home. Father, I thank you now in Jesus' name that every sickness and every disease and every torment of the mind, those who lived and wrestled with failure, Father God, I pray in Jesus' name that that evil thing will not be able to work against them anymore. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Well, listen, I want to give you an opportunity to worship the Lord with giving right now, with uh, you tithes, with your offering, somebody said, well, it's tithe. It's a tenth of everything that you're blessed with. And um, somebody said, well, my, I got it by my own work and by my own effort. No, the Lord blessed you with it. And so a tenth of it already belongs to him, and we honor him with the tenth. Somebody said, well, I didn't make anything. What does this bring the Lord an offering then? Give him something to work with, and he'll multiply it. I want you to just come worship the Lord quickly. Just come, because I, I don't feel that we've done, so just... Just quickly come. Quickly come. Take care of Masate. Just a just a little different. Fountains flowing from the throne of God. Overflowing in our lives through love. From our bellies pouring forth your word. Fountains flowing from the throne of God. A fountain flowing from the throne of God. A overflowing in our lives through the from our bellies pouring forth your word. A fountain flowing from the throne of God. I am a child of the living God. My abiding place is His rest. Oh, I am a child of the living God. Oh, I am a child of the living God. My abiding place is His rest. My abiding place is his rest. Hallelujah. Kura baba si, kura baba kuta, kura sate teru. Kiri tana mangel na mama nengo shekiri. Kiri na mandala nini. Kiri na mandala nini yo. Kura mama mangi la na 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 ne brava zira da la vasi la la na ne la 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 manta la la vetero ni na na si se se su ti la ma prive oh no sala sa ya la ve kala sa la ya ve ya ve lo lo si la ve li mundo. Si la veia la guie pro monin, sala va pro mondo, vi si, vo vive lei. Fountain slow from the throne of God, the overflowing in my life through love. From our bellies pouring forth your word. Fountains flowing from the throne of God. This river makes blood the city of the king. 
This mighty river makes glad the city of the king. This river of his life, this river of his grace, this river of his manifest presence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father's released his presence, his power, his authority, his glory without limitation for anybody who receive <laughs> right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we ask you, we ask you for that divine encounter. We ask you, Father God, to stand in that place with you, God, where we see this thing, so oh God, that natural eye cannot see, oh God, where we step beyond the realms of our limitation, of our own earthly understanding. Oh God, we pray, Lord, that we might see and understand and know you, Lord Jesus, in a way that goes beyond that which we've understood to this moment. That's right, you just lift up your voice and you begin to cry out to God. You know, listen, this, when I say that, you know, I'm really calling out for them, really calling out for those who a divine unction is stirring on the inside. There's a divine unction to begin to stir on the inside. It just takes you over. I'm just looking, you know, I look at Elizabeth right now, just flowing in that realm. I just heard Nikki. I heard a couple of others. It's not a human realm. It's not just a religious response. It's not just a shout, a holler because you're participating. That's all good because I'm going to tell you right now, that's what God uses to take you deeper. But there can become stirrings on the inside of you. There becomes these cries of the spirit on the inside of you. We want you to become so sensitive. We, want, we, don't want you to, we don't want you to in any way hold that back or restrain that. Hallelujah. So, Summer, come here just a second, will you? I want, I just, I want, you, to, I want, you, to, tell, I want you to tell everybody what happened to you. And, because you just recently gave your life to Jesus, right? Yes. Yes, I did. Yeah, yeah so... so <laughs> So tell everybody where you're from. I'm from Bakersfield. And uh, so how was it that you got introduced to Jesus? Uh, Brittany was in my life for about seven months before. Could you turn this up, guys? It's, when you can't hear somebody, turn it up. <laughs> I was working at Burger Lounge with Brittany, and um, it took about seven months for me to finally come out with an eating disorder. And it turned out to be something beautiful. Um, I had gotten... To my worst point, it turned into bulimia, and I was in complete denial. So I told Brittany I had to take a week off from work to be in the uh, hospital and kind of come out with this. And um, she invited me to the I Am Remnant concert, and that was the night that I accepted Jesus Christ as my Savior. But it wasn't, it wasn't until... After the first night, when I was meeting everybody, that I actually felt Jesus truly, truly, truly felt him was in everybody's faces. It was because of you guys that I saw Jesus Christ. <laughs> it was in everybody's smiles, and everybody thanked me for coming, and everybody was so happy I was finally there. 
and I, I saw that, I saw Jesus in you guys, in everybody's eyes, in everybody's faces, and that's where, that's where I met him. <laughs> that's beautiful. That's the way it's supposed to be. <laughs> Hallelujah. That is awesome. Yeah. And, and then you could turn mine down a little bit. I, you can turn hers up and turn mine down. It, well, it's a confusing thing. I understand. But at any rate, um, so have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? Yes, I did. <laughs> 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 and, and that's pretty wonderful. I, <laughs> Father, I thank you for the anointing. So how, how's your body? My body is 100% healed because of Jesus. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> All the way. That's awesome. And my family, you know, is still concerned. Uh, you should contact your doctors, go to your therapist, see nutritionists. And I've told them I have been healed. And that's right. They see That's it. Right. They do. On, <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah, that is great. That is great. I am so excited about what the Holy Ghost, what summer is allowing the Holy Spirit to do. It's like rapid spirit growth, spiritual growth. It's just stepping into the realms. You can see that something happened, uh, you know, and it's, that's the way it's supposed to be. The, the spirit of the Lord will change the expression upon your face. Yes. And, you know, it's really easy, dear people. Just, just be confident that this very presence of the living God who would that all men be saved is actually with you and in you. And if you would step out of you and quit doing what it is that you're doing, you know, and just become yielded in a greater way to the Holy Ghost, you'll find that you'll have a greater impact on the lost around you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Summer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Dad, Papa's, Papa, you just sit down for a minute because I just, you know, Dad, I don't, I, don't want you to, I don't want you to get up. I want you just to sit right there. You can sit there. Everybody, you can sit down. I just want to hear from Dad for a few minutes because I, I want Dad to just share with you you know why he believes he's called to preach and what happened when did he get when he got called to preach because I think that it's important for everybody to understand the call of God upon their life dad when did you know you were called to preach I was testifying in a church in California I was asked to testify I was in Sacramento California at the time I was uh, in the first into the U.S. Air Force, and I was asked to testify uh, of my experience in Jesus. And while I was testifying, the Spirit of the Lord came upon me in an anointing that I'd never experienced before, and I found myself expressing the love of Jesus and the power of God to transform lives. And while I was speaking, several people in the, whole, in, the in the congregation received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> right while I was preaching. And that's what I expect from now, from that day to this, that while the word goes forth, people are saved, healed, delivered, and filled with the Holy Ghost <laughs> under the power of the Word of God. The Word of God is the power that changes people. And if you speak in the power of the Word of God and you receive it, when you open your ears up and receive, right there in your seat, the next thing you know, you're filled, you're changed, you're healed, you're delivered, all by the power of God through the Word. Not so much for the laying on of hands, and the laying on of words, but the word of God opening up your heart and changing your life. Yeah. That's where it happens. When Jesus comes in, when you find out who Jesus is, I spend a lot of time on the streets in, uh, in uh, the Philip. Come on, I can't even say where I'm going to live in anymore. In the Philippines. When I'm preaching the gospel on the street in the Philippines, so I'm expecting people to, be, to hear the name Jesus, lift up the name Jesus, 
and Jesus to do the work. If they'll just stop and hear the name Jesus, there's one name given on the man that is above every other name, and that name is Jesus, and that name is given to us to transform the lives of people. And when Jesus comes in, when they receive Jesus, the word has to go forth that they know who Jesus is. Amen. I, I often ask people, now you know about Jesus, but do you know Jesus and does Jesus know you? If you, if you know Jesus and Jesus knows you, then you're born of the Spirit. If you don't know you're born again, well, how can you know that you're born? It's amazing. I'm, I'm born. You can tell. I'm sitting here. I'm talking to you. But I've been born again. And you, can, you should be able to tell that also. Hallelujah. So if you don't know you got a second birth, you probably don't really realize what birth is all about. Being born of the Spirit is life. He that hath the Son has life. He that does not have the Son of God is a walking dead person. So let's see if we can raise the dead. Hey. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Let's raise the dead out of their sin. That's the power of resurrection. It isn't just going to a coffin and trying to get somebody out of, the, out of a coffin. It's getting people out of their coffin of death. Yeah. They're walking dead people and don't know it. Yeah. Now uh, you're hearing some of my preaching on the street. This is the way we minister on the streets in, uh, uh, in throughout wherever we're at in the Philippines. And God is raising people from the dead. Amen. 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 I want to see more people raised from the dead. Amen. And that's the only thing that will change you and bring you into the power of God is the resurrection life. If Jesus is in you, have you been raised from the dead? Amen. Have you had a second birth? Do you know you're born? If you, well, I can see you're born. You're there standing there, walking there, talking there. I can see you're born. But have you been born twice? Do you have a second birth? Do you know you're born again? If you're not born again, you're eternal, and you're going to have to spend eternity someplace it's either heaven or hell. There's only two places to go. Which one you're going to go to? you got to be born again to go to heaven. And that's my preaching on the street. Amen. That's amazing, that's Father. That's mostly the preaching I can do anymore is street preaching. I'm a street preacher anymore. <laughs> but that's where it's at. That's where the people are. We go down to the market, go where the people are mulling around, and they don't know what they're doing, but uh, they, I, they think they're shopping. But I went there to tell them about why they're there. Amen. They're there to hear about Jesus. If it's not about Jesus, it's about nothing. Yes, Lord. It's all about Jesus. If you can't talk about Jesus, you don't have anything to talk about. Dad, when, you know, you know, it's like this morning. Walter said, you know, that he, that uh, he saw your burden for souls, and he and his pastor, Pastor Elpy, saw your burden for soul, and said, "My goodness, how do you get that kind of a burden? I want that kind of burden. Tell us what happened. How did you, what, what, how did you get a burden for the lost? Where did that begin? It really began in me, when God took me to heaven. I was." in Pacific Palisade, L.A., on my way to Alaska by the United States government. And I found myself laying on the floor, crying out to God. I had been talking to a man on the outside that was an alcoholic and preached to him, begged him, pleaded with him to give his life to Jesus. And He'd been through church. He'd been, he, knew, he knew the catechism. He knew the words. But uh, he walked away. And when he walked away from me, I went in, laid on the floor, cried out to God for his soul. And while I was crying out to God for his soul, God took me out of my body. I was looking down on my body, feeling of myself, and knowing that I was, couldn't tell the difference in the body or out of the body. 
And God took me to heaven. He took me to the great white throne judgment. Mm -hmm. It was there at the great white throne judgment. And then I seen the line coming out of the, uh, out of the people that weren't ready to meet God. And the mallet would come down and they would drop away. And I watched for a long time, one after another, being condemned to eternity without God. And watching that, I said, where are they going? And the Lord took me. And I fell with one of them in the scream and the cry of, oh. dis of despair. Cannot be, cannot be I, I couldn't even try to imitate what I heard. Those, ear, those cries still is in my ears of that lost, eternally lost soul shut out forever. I fell with them to the very door of hell itself until the scream of that lost soul was rounded out with the screams of others. And as I uh, listened to that scream and it was coming up out of hell, I got that close to the pit. I woke up in my body. I realized I was laying on the floor and from that day to this, souls on the way to hell, lost forever. What a horrible, horrible situation that is lost. There's two sides to it. The side of those that's never heard the gospel. Yeah. They wake up in hell. How did I get here? What did I do to deserve this? Right. You never heard about Jesus. Never heard the name. Oh, God. Go in all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. My Lord, they have to hear. They have to hear the name of Jesus. Found myself in a country just a few months ago where they've never heard the name of Jesus. They were Buddhists. They don't know who Jesus is, the whole nation. I want to go back. And if I was 20 years younger, I would live there. I'd go there and that. tell them about Jesus. We know. They've got to know who Jesus is. How can they find their way to heaven when no one has told them about Jesus and they wake up in eternity without Jesus. Dad, let me ask you this. I mean, do you, do you believe that the Lord would still give people that same kind of vision, that same kind of call today? Do you think that, that people can still have visions oh and dreams and revelation? And what do you, and, and, and I know the answer to that, what do, you, what do you think it is that prevents people from touching heaven like it seemed like your generation in the early time of your generation it seemed like so many people touched heaven and it's and on and now it's rather it's a little bit seems like it's a bit more difficult for people to make the transition from the earthly to the heavenly what do you think's going on fear fear of not being able to be successful fear of not having enough money fear of being out there without support they don't know who Jesus is. Well, I'm is. just talking about the encounter itself, just the encounter. What do you think? What do you think prevents many people from having the encounter to really have oh. that burden? There's the showing you anything? The, the very powers of hell despises losing hold of one soul. And he will hold you captivity to your lust for love, money, uh, lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, the pride of life. That, those are the strongholds. All, if you go to the Word and you look at the strongholds that hold people bound, it's simply the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. And the pride of life is probably one of the most hardest of the three to break. They're proud of who they are. They're proud of their accomplishments. They're uh, proud of their ability. 
And it's a pride that is so sneaky you don't know you have it. That's true. That's true. It's the, it's the most The love of one's own life keeps us from the love of God's life. Uh, nothing equal to the pride of life. But the lust of the flesh to have houses and lands and swimming pools and automobiles uh -huh. and whatever else yeah. comes under the word lust. To, to have, to be important, to be wanted, to be seen, to be somebody. I am somebody. I know who Jesus is. If you know Jesus, you're somebody. Come on. And if you don't know Jesus, you're a nobody. Come on. Amen. Amen. Just to know the power of God and know that God will provide. People wonder, how do you go to all of these places? Uh, where do you get the money? Uh, I, was, I was in uh, Texas. Uh, I had left here and gone to Texas, and uh, I was... I spoke to someone in the Philippines. I didn't know where I was at. And the Lord spoke to me and said, go to the Philippines. I didn't have any money. I didn't have any way to go. I didn't go around itinerary and call it and please uh, help me. I want to go to the Philippines. I just got on an airplane and went. <laughs> you, you go by faith. You believe God. God opens the door. The ticket's paid for, and away you go. And you get there, you don't know where you are, but you find out there's something to do. There's people there that need Jesus. And that's what it's all about. Get Amen. them into Jesus. Don't worry about the money. Don't worry about the ticket. Just get on the plane and go. Take the boat if you can't afford the plane. Just go. But, of course, of course you got to be sent. And, oh. and the sent, the sent, the sent, the sent. God is the said, encounter, the sent, uh, the being sent uh, is the encounter. And that was it. I mean, that's really what I wanted you to talk about uh, was just really the, the encounter, encounter. The encounter was uh, amazing. I, I wasn't even thinking about the Philippines. I never even gave them a thought. Well, I'm talking about the initial encounter. And Your initial encounter is really what well, I'm talking about. The initial about. encounter is the encounter with Jesus. That's right. And that was the day that I gave because my all life. Because all, uh, all the Philippines is is another event in a long history of going since the encounter. Uh, so it didn't start there. It started long ago. And this is, I mean, I just really, I'm really wanting you to hear this tonight because I know that I, I, I'm, I'm not information driven. I'm, for me, I mean, it's really about bringing everybody to a desperation for an encounter. And I, you know, I believe what, you know, Dad's beginning to express to us is that he found himself in a desperation for an encounter because he went to minister to a person the person's soul became so endeared to him. He cried out, God, what does it take? What am I going to do? And out of that cry and the desperation of our heart to really want to do what God has for us to do, to really touch the heart of the Father, brings an encounter. And this is something that we want to see happen for everybody in this place. I had a triple encounter. My first encounter was the surrender of my life. I had been in a club playing a gambling machine in Mississippi, and uh, I had skipped church that night on purpose because I was under conviction. And that night, God cornered me, and two Baptist boys led me to Jesus. And I had to, uh, I had to surrender. There was nothing left to do but surrender. And that meant complete surrender. I became a child of the king that night. And from that time on, then there was another encounter, and it was called the Baptism of the Holy Ghost. That was uh, uh, some months later. No. Uh, I, I was in the Baptist You've church. You've had both of them. Excited, excited about Jesus, and uh, the military moved me to uh, Illinois, and there in Illinois, uh, a, a boy from Florida, he was a little bit odd to me, but he hauled me off to a... Uh, church, he said, uh, th you're going to know that you've been to church. He said, uh, did, the, the walls will be shaking, the floors will be rattling, and the folks will be hollering, and the dancing will be going on. And I thought, what kind of craziness is this? So I went there to see about craziness, and I got crazy. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. I had an encounter with Jesus called the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen. 
uh, and I could tell for some time the wonderful experiences and that particular night it was the most glorious night of my life it was it was triple salvation I knew what it was to be saved, and I was excited about my salvation. I got genuinely born again. Yeah, you did. But this time, I got baptized in the Holy yeah. Ghost and so intoxicated with the presence of God. Amen. Uh, it, was, it took me 24 hours to come out of, uh, out of the shaking. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. And I've never been the same since. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Hallelujah. But after that, I've had encounters where that the Lord would... Uh, Geneva wants you to tell him about the drive home. He wants you to tell him about how the drive home was from church that night. Well, I shouldn't have went to church that night because I had, uh, I had uh, my examination for uh, passing uh, of what I was going to be in the career of the, of the Air Force. And uh, I was not prepared. I'd, I'd been uh, goofing off reading the Bible and going to church instead of paying, uh, instead of paying attention to the, to the uh, uh, TO or the tech order that I was supposed to be studying so I could pass the test to keep from being a uh, military police or a kitchen police working in the kitchen. Uh, I, I had to, I had to pass that test and. I didn't want to go to church because uh, I had to study. I hadn't been studying. I've been going to church. And uh, so uh, now I've got to get ready. The test is tomorrow. And this young fellow from Florida said, come on, go to church. You're not going to learn everything that's in the book that you need to know for tomorrow. You might just well go to church. So I, I did, and that's the night I received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I had an old car, had three quarters of a turn in the steering wheel before it catch up, but we drove the thing to, uh, to the nearest uh, place where we were going, and it was one of those fired up churches. And uh, I didn't want to be in any other church after I got in one that was on fire. Praise the Lord. You go to a church that's on fire, then you got to go back to the fire. That's right, that's I, right. Come on. I became fire addicted. <laughs> I wanted what God had. And so the fire of God was my attraction. And uh, I, skipped, I skipped studying and went to church that night. And that's the night I received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And uh, I was so overwhelmed with the Holy Spirit uh, when I drove home that night, uh, I, I didn't drive. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't remember only that uh, my hands was on the, on the roof of the car more than they were on the steering wheel. And my foot was uh, on the floor as far as it would push on the pedal. <laughs> uh, we flew home, jumped around curves, amazing. And I didn't wake up until I, I, I woke up. I said, oh, oh, the, the, the air base. That's the, I, gotta, uh, I pulled myself together well enough to stop the car and to get out of it. Uh, I went past the guard. I had to salute him and, then, and sound off my name, rank, and serial number. I didn't know how I was going to do that because I was lost in the spirit. Uh, but I got there, and I, I got able to make my salute and, and uh, say my name, rank, and serial number and keep walking. And uh, I went uh, right back into speaking in tongues and worshiping. And he hollered at me, what did you say, soldier? And I knew I couldn't answer him, and he wouldn't want to know what I said. So I just kept walking. I didn't pay attention to him. I woke up the next morning the same way, ready to do my test, marching and I felt like every time I picked up my foot it was going to fly marching uh, to school and I had four hours of written examination and four hours of practical examination of working the electrical systems that I had been supposed to know how to do and <laughs> hallelujah <laughs> Holy Ghost got uh, a, a triple A that day <laughs> thank you Lord uh, I said, the Holy Ghost got the A. I, I didn't know what I was doing. I just 
mark the, mark the questions. I'd look at them, there was multiple choice, and I'd just mark them. And I went down and marked them all, and uh, I, I marked 100%. Holy Spirit, don't miss anything. <laughs> I, I hadn't studied. I didn't know what was on that test. I just knew A, B, and C, and I just marked an A or a B or a C, and went down through and marked them all. <laughs> I'm not storying. <laughs> the Holy Ghost knows. And you no, walk we, in the we, Holy we, Ghost. We, Geneva and I, we've heard this story hundreds of times. It's always the same, believe me. You, 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 there's a whole lot more details. Dad, the third time, because I, I want Walter, I know that Walter's got some things on his heart to share, and I just wanted him to, and I know a few other people, you know. Which one you're referring to? You said you had a third one. Oh, third my encounter. third encounter. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Well, that was my trip to heaven. Yeah. That was my trip to heaven, and uh, I got to look at the great white throne judgment. Thousands and thousands on the right-hand side, dressed in spotless white, and an innumerable number of just dressed people in normal clothes on the other side, and the line coming out of that crowd to the white, white throne judgment and being judged one at a time. Oh, God. And I asked God, the guide that was with me, that took me there, said, where are they going? And he said, come and see. And I was taken from the, from the judgment seat of uh, the great white throne judgment to the, to the pit of hell. And that's where I got my vision for lost souls. It's with me today as much as it was that day. So when you stepped into miracle ministry, and, and God began to do signs and wonders. Tell people about the angel just a little bit. That was another encounter with God. To, to come to the place to know that signs and wonders and miracles got the attention of the people. That you could tell them about Jesus not you. And the Lord dealt with me about uh, seeing the people that had gone into it and become famous and become important and become financially es established. And I said, God, if, if the miracle ministry takes me into prosperity and I lose sight of you, I don't want it because uh, I'm a selfish man. Heaven's too real, and hell's too hot, and eternity's too long. I'm not going to play games. And I'd rather not have the anointing to cast out devils and heal the sick and lose my soul. I can't do that. So when you would lay hands on the sick, what would happen? begin to be saved, healed, delivered, Holy Ghost power come in. Wonderful things begin to happen. Thank you, Lord. Thank so what you, about Lord. the angel of the Lord? Many times I'd lay my hand on a person and I knew it wasn't mine. It was his hand was on mine. There was an angel that traveled with me, still does. I see him every now and then. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Me blonde hair, blue eyed, stands about three foot higher than me. Amen. Supernatural is real. The, heaven, the heavenly realm is real. The, the heavenly oh, it's realm. real. Oh, it's real. We, we think that we're separated from that which goes on in the realms of heaven, but we're not. Um, we integrated with it. People choose, even God's people choose to only want to live in and see and be conscious of that which is pu purely earthly. But that's where the Word of God changes us and allows us to begin to see 
Spirit of the Lord gives us revelation and causes us to understand that we actually interacting with the living God, that he's actually moving through us. The and encounter of the Lord, son, that made the difference. Uh, I was in a church in, uh, in Ohio trying to preach the gospel, and uh, I went and fell on the floor after the service in, uh, in my little place where I was staying, and I cried out to God, Lord, I, I just don't want to be like the rest of the preachers. If, if I can't have the anointing and the power to, to see people saved and healed and delivered, I'll just go back and support those that know how to do it. I, I had a job in the shop, and I, I had a good future if I, uh, I was making top dollar at that time when I left the shop to go back into the ministry. And I, I just throwed myself on the altar in the face of God. And it was there that night, that time of prayer, that I met my angel. And uh, when the angel's with me, the signs and the wonders take place. So it's, when are you going to retire? It's not me. huh? When are you going to, why don't you retire? Why don't I what? Retire. retire. <laughs> he that? can't hear that word. He doesn't know what that means. Yeah. Yeah, what he is does, that he word? does have no comprehension of what that word is. It's another language. Oh, you see my retirement as I go up. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I'm not leaving here until my work's done. My work's not done yet, so I can't leave yet. We're certain about it. <laughs> Walter, quickly, just tell us, tell us how you ended up in the Philippines. I married a Filipino. Okay, that's, that's one way to end up that's there. That's one way to end up It was there. a default, though. I mean, that's not, you know, God sent you there. Obviously. Well, I was a mission director in Mississippi. Okay. And a Filipino missionary came through my church. And one of my jobs was to be a servant and to drive the here missionary. Here, stand up here. You don't get, you don't get to sit Praise down. Praise the Lord. I don't get to sit down. To drive the, whoops to drive the missionary from one place to the other. And that particular Sunday, our church in Port Gibson, Mississippi, uh, is a unique church. It's an African-American church with a big uh, mountain guy from Arkansas that's the pastor church and a little redneck guy from Vicksburg playing the saxophone and was the mission director. And we that's were, you. That's me, yeah which I'm a little bit bigger now than I was. It's called increase. <laughs> Amen. But to make a long story short, I had to drive the guy from Vicksburg, Mississippi, to Gloucester, Mississippi, to a church there. And that is a two-and-a-half-hour drive south uh, from uh, down 61 Highway across to, to uh, almost the Louisiana border. As a matter of fact, it is on the Louisiana border. And when we got there that night, we had a Holy Ghost meeting. The power of God just fell in the place, and uh, we went back to the pastor's house, and he fed us a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. <laughs> and uh, the missionary had it in his mind that he was going to stay the week with the pastor. Well, the pastor was sort of missionaried out. He just had a guy from India that came in and stayed was supposed to stay, he thought, for a week and stayed three months, and he had just left. So he did not want the guy there. He carried me to the back room. He said, uh, what, what are we going to do with him? And I said, well, he, you're the pastor. What do you want to do? He said, but you're the mission director, and he went to your church first. <laughs> I said, okay. So we, I came back out, and we just asked him, and I said, we just need to tell him that, that you know, you don't, you have things to do, and, and is there somewhere to go? So I offered to drive him back to my hometown, which is three hours back, uh, and get him a hotel room and put him up. And, uh, and he said, no, 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 I want to go to, uh, to Jackson, Mississippi. He was an Assembly of God missionary, uh, and he wanted to go to the headquarters. Well, that's four-hour drive in another direction, and then I have to drive back another hour west to my hometown. But I said, that, that'll work. I said, is there contact? 
And so he called the brother, and we got uh, on the way back uh, up uh, I-55 and across. We had one of those Holy Ghost drives and just singing in the Holy Ghost, praying in the Spirit, and uh, I would turn and prophesy to him, and he would turn and prophesy to me. And he asked me, he said, uh, are you married? I said, I kind of laughed. I said, well, I said, the bells would have to ring, the trumpets would have to blow, the sun would have to stand still, and I'd have to hear from the Lord. And then he said, I know someone. I said, well, I guess the bells are ringing and the trumpets are blowing. He said, uh, can I give, would you give me your email and your phone number? I'm headed to uh, New York, and uh, can I give her the number? So he walks into, she's, she's from the Philippines, of course, but she's serving as a, as a praise and worship leader there in New York. And I, can I tell the story about my wife? Sure. Uh, my wife, I have a picture. We have a picture of her. She's about this tall, and she has a ukulele. I call her a little church mouse. She was always in church. Uh, Similarly, God pastor came through uh, her a little village. They call it a barangay. And they preached the gospel for a week. Signs and wonders, miracles, angels' visitation, people running out to the little little uh, uh, huts and dragging people that were uh, on the deathbed, and they supernaturally get healed on the way to the church. All these things took place, and her mom and dad uh, got filled with the Holy Ghost in that meeting uh, and rolled in the floor like the old-time Pentecostals, you know, they're sure. really true holy rollers. Amen. And my wife was raised in that environment and in that heritage. Her mom and dad were just simple uh, rice farmers, uh, and, but made a good living uh, and provided for him, the, her. So she was raised in the church. And when she was um, 15 years old, the story goes like this. Her brother was the senior pastor, and he told her that the keyboard player, the piano player, was going to resign. And that's in the Philippines. And that she was to play the piano next Sunday. And so she went to the church every afternoon and began to ping on the piano, and the Lord supernaturally gave her the gift to play the piano. And that Sunday, she began to play How Great Thou Art, and the power of God fell in the church, and many people were baptized with the Holy Ghost. That's the gift of God to be. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's wonderful. That's what I got. That's Amen. Amen. That's beautiful. Let, let me say, that. I, I've got to prophesy. There's someone okay. here believing God. For a husband or a wife, if you'll live holy, my wife, when I married her, we married when we were older. I took care of my father for 14 years. He was handicapped, uh, well, on oxygen. And she took care of her mother and father until they both passed. So we, we were both prepared, prepared for the ministry, seeking the Lord, knowing that we were called. But let me say something. On my wedding night, my wife was 45 years old. She was pure as the driven snow. Amen. Keep yourself pure. Keep yourself holy. Oh, I can't do it. No, you can't, but God can do it through you. Amen. So, back to Mississippi. We have this Holy Ghost time and everything. He's prophesying. I'm prophesying. And and I drop him off there, and I go home, and I'm still caught up in the Spirit. And the Lord keeps telling me, hey, go for this. Go for it. I got a green light. So he goes to, to uh, Queens, New York, Flushing, New York, and, and he's there early, and he goes up and knocks on the door, and, and she's staying in the apartment in the church, the little church mouse. And he walks in, he said, oh, this... Walking like this, and he said, oh, this house needs a, needs a man. This apartment needs a man. And she said, no, Pastor, I need a husband. 
He said, well, I met someone. Can I call him on the phone and tell him to call you? So for a year, we communicated and called, and she invited me up, and she heard me preach one time and saw how beautiful my hair was and fell in love <laughs> immediately. No, actually, I had a wig. I wore a wig. <laughs> yeah. And she seen the wig, and she said, if I'm going to marry you, you have to take that dumb thing off. You look silly. And I obeyed the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Amen. But that's, that was our story. You traded a wig for a wife. You traded a wig for a wife. Amen. <laughs> and so, but at the same time, she's been to Bible college. I went to Bible college. We were both preparing, you know, uh, trying to not to hold on to anything. Isn't that hard? The more I'd give away, more things would come. The more I'd sell, it seemed like somebody would give me something, you know. And uh, I have a house in Mississippi. All of our things are in Arkansas, and we're living in the Philippines. Amen. Can I obey the Lord, Pastor? Yeah. Uh, sister, I have to tell you something. This morning, I kept looking at your worship. I, d I know who you are because your family, and I met you just for a brief moment. But the Lord spoke to me. You've been crying out, fix this thing. Fix it, Lord. I can't fix it. I'm sick and tired of it. I don't want it. You have to fix it. i got to have you to fix it. And the Lord told me to tell you that he's taken out the wrenches. He's got it on the, on the, on the, on the uh, crankshaft. He's got it wherever. And he's turning the wrenches, and he's fixing this thing that you cannot fix he will fix it. He will make it brand new. It will be restored. And that place in ministry that, that you have been before, you're going to be exalted even higher. It's going to be greater than ever before. So don't give up on the plan of God that you knew from the very beginning. You want to run away? You want to give up? You, you're tired of crying. And the Lord's seen those cries. He's seen those tears. He knows your heartache. He knows all that you're going through. He even told me, he said, you don't know what you've been crying for in the spirit. Your mind is unfruitful. And you've been crying things in tongues that you really don't want to do in the natural, but you've been praying it in the spirit. So accept the will of God. Hold on by faith and receive it. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Awesome. And, and sister, I see you. I, I, I look at you and I see you. And, you, you, and I guess this is your husband. I, I, I don't know. I, I hope so. He's sitting really close to you. <laughs> Amen. But I saw you guys, y'all are, you're sitting in a car, you're racing the motor, and you got a U-Haul trailer behind you. And you're saying, Lord, I don't want to go unless you go with me. The Lord said, he's going with you. He sent his angels to prepare the way. So just get ready for the ride. He's fixed to give you the ride of your life. Yeah. Amen. And the way he showed me is that when your brother was talking about Jacob and the ladder, that you, you've been on the, on the ladder, but you're fixing to step up one step higher in the glory of God uh, on the ladder of the Holy Ghost. Hey, glory! <laughs> Hallelujah! <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now I got to talk to you. You've seen the glory of God and you know it. You, you've made some mistakes. You, you've uh, been hard-headed. I'm sorry to tell you. I got to tell you what the way to hold it. The Lord said just don't, don't pamper. Don't pamper him. Don't pamper him. <laughs> you've got in doubt and unbelief in some things. You've declared it out of your mouth, and because you've declared it out of your mouth, you've received some of those things. But it's been fixed. This trip, your mind has been renewed. You have been restored. You have been forgiven. The enemy will not condemn you. So don't speak any doubt and unbelief anymore. Amen. Know that God is with you. Know that he's with you. That angel that was with you before is there now, saith God, and you will do great exploits in the kingdom of God. Don't say the churches are closed to you anymore. The churches are wide open, but you don't believe they are. So start simply declaring it, declaring it, declaring it, declaring it. 
you are going to be a father to many. You are a father to many. See your place, see your position, and stand up as a father and declare the enemy to let go of the Philippines, let go of the young pastors. Take your position, man of God. You are a general. It's true. So command the troops it's true. and expect them to move. It's true. Hallelujah. It's true. Hallelujah. Don't belittle yourself any longer. Watch every word that comes out of your mouth because it's coming from your heart. It's true. Hallelujah. Everybody's got a whole Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for the Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for the work of your Holy Spirit. Glory, 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 glory. That is not done yet. Yes, Lord. Father, we thank you for strengthening yes, yes. his body. Yes. We thank you for cartilage yes, in this in yes, these Lord. knees. Yes, Lord. Father God, we thank you for a great joy. In Holy Ghost moments. Well, you know, the fact of it is, a lot of the things that the Lord said to me tonight and I was ministering and preaching was just to stir my father up. Absolutely. It's stir my dad up. Amen. And when we pray that you stirred up too. Listen, you know, I, I am so interested in everybody being able to step out and begin to flow in the gifts of the Spirit. I, I'm really getting to the point where I just want to walk around with the microphone and hand it to everybody and say, okay, now where are you going with this? Huh? It's tell us how God's stirring in your heart. Now, I promise this is what I'm going to promise you that I'm going to do by the hope, help and the grace of the Lord. I'm going to watch for people I can see the anointing on them. Okay? So we're not going to give you, don't worry, we're not going to give you the microphone if we can't see the anointing on you. Okay? So then you won't basically be on the, you know, in a bad situation. But we want you to, we want you to buck out of us up here. Be cool, shy. We be mumble, might you say. We want you to be cool to us up here. We, we want, we, boom, boom, shit, okay. We want you to get so stirred up. When, dad, when dad was saying, well, you know, if I can't move signs, wonders, and miracles, I'm going to go back to work. I'm going to tell you right now, that isn't just for preachers. That's for everybody. You, you're supposed to do signs and wonders and miracles at work. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Sounds like heaven. Heaven on earth. It sounds like heaven. Heaven on earth. Signs and wonders. Miracles and wonders. Sounds like heaven. It is heaven. Can you see it? You know, I know you all seen the picture of Jesus standing, knocking at the door. Do you notice there's no door handle? On Jesus' side, we have to respond and open the door. Say with me, oh, Lord, I open the door. Lord, I open the door. I open the door. Lord, I open the Come door. in, Lord. Come in. Feel me. Feel me to overflowing. Hallelujah. Feel me to the abundance of your grace and your mercy and your love. Let your, let your love overflow me, Lord. I open the door. Hallelujah. I seek you. I call on you. He's not, he, he's easy to be found, but you have to call. You have to knock. Amen. That's just the spiritual principle, but the, 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 the good thing about that spiritual law, it works every time. <laughs> Amen. He calls. Let me ask you, are you saved? Yeah. Can, can me? Are you filled? Yeah. Well, then you have something down on the inside of you that cries, Abba, Father. Do you have that? Pastor Philip said it. If you don't have it, you're not saved. On every believer, we cry, Abba, Father. There is a groaning on the inside of us for the manifestations of the sons of God, for his presence. It's there. You, all you have to do is identify with it, yield to it, move in it, surrender to it. And guess what? He will come and make his abode. Live with you, move with you. That's why the apostle said we live and move and have our being in him. Why? They wasn't just doing it by faith. There was a feeling there. There was an anointing there. There was an unction there. Amen. When, when his presence is there, all of a sudden something happens. You have the mind of Christ. You know what he thinks. Hallelujah. Then when you know what he thinks, he gives you a command. You take a step. That's supernatural faith. Amen. But do you know why we're failing? 
We haven't spent the time to talk to him. We haven't opened the door. We haven't identified with the knocking and the calling and the wounding and the crying on the inside that we have. You have to identify this thing. And then you respond, Lord, I need the passion. See, the passion is already there. That's why Paul said, I stir myself up, praying in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Make yourself pray in tongues. Well, I don't feel like it. Who cares? We're, we're in a time and a season that prophecy is kissing eternity. It's no t- this is, I'm tired of church. I'm tired of religion. I'm tired of playing games. It's time for the real Jesus to stand up, the real anointing to come in the church. And it will not come until we invite him. We are co-laborers with him. He works with us. Our heart cry and our faith in response to him. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Listen, I want everybody to stand with me. Thank you so much, brother. Dad is so much, so blessed. We're so blessed to have you here. We are. Listen, I, I want to, I just want to receive an offering for dad. I want to be a part of what he's doing. It's as though he's, you know, reaching out to the Lord right now to see some things advance in what he believes the Lord has given him to do in this mountain region called In the Hug. and uh, In the Hug. And so he's in the middle of the hug there. And so we just want to, we want to, we want to participate with him and help him as he's moving around. We, you know, in different places that the Lord is sending him. So you just do what you, just do what the Lord lays on your heart to do. And, um, and so I'm just going to take this offering basket right here, and I'm going to set it out here. And while we're doing this, I want you to find a bunch of people around you to hug them, bless them, tell them that you love them in Jesus' name. And just come, come share with Dad in his, in, in his ministry. We want to send them away with some, you know, with some help, with some provision here. And, um, you know, and so watch what God will do. To multiply you and your ability to give more as you obey the Lord and go beyond your ability and step into divine ability. You say, well, you know, we've been given a lot. My goodness, I think, I think we actually in missions have already given more than 30% of our income in missions this year. Amen. More than, where, where's Rob? Is Rob here? Rob, you back there? Where you at, buddy? Rob, are you here? Say, y'all, give me some of those lungs. Where are you at? We didn't just, where are you hiding? We were just calling you to prophesy, man. Now we're just asking, how much have we given in missions? 45, 50%. Come on, man. Come on, guys. Come on, man. And that is no small income. Father has blessed us. Hasn't he blessed us? He's blessed us. Hallelujah. And I'm going to tell you right now, he's blessing you. Amen. He's called us to take care of the poor, take care of the orphans and the widows, take care of traveling ministry, and to take care of the local church. And when we, and that's a lot of giving. Huh? That's my goodness. That's a huh? That's a lot of provision. But what happens is when we're willing to step out and obey and cooperate with him, he resources us. He finances it. Huh? I was telling the Lord about something the other day. He said, Well, you and I'm telling you, the Lord spoke to me. He said, Listen, I'm financing you. Yeah, listen, go ahead and get in it. Go ahead and get in it. Get in it and win it. Because this is it is amazing when you stepping out and you think, well, can I spend that? And the Lord goes, I'm financing you. What do you want? I'm dad. Man, I'm telling you right now, well, my, my sons, when they come up with an idea, I'm in it. I'm in it. You got an idea? I'm going to support that idea. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to be right behind it. But Father's even better. He, he loves us so much. Hey, eh? He loves us. So just come worship the Lord. It's just... And the basket's right over here to the, to the, uh, it's on the right. <laughs> Listen, Joshua and Allie and grandbaby's going to be with us on Wednesday. And we're really excited about that. Hallelujah. 
And uh, we, we know we're not going to do a lot this week in ministry because it's family week. It's Thanksgiving. Does everybody have a, everybody's got a family and some place to go for Thanksgiving? If you know anybody around you doesn't have a family, doesn't have some place to go for Thanksgiving, you need to invite them. Okay? Make sure when you're hugging people and tell them that you love them. Hallelujah. That you ask them and make sure that they got a place to go. Amen. Well, find a bunch of people around you, hug them, tell them that you love them, bless them in Jesus' name. Listen, if anybody's sick or afflicted or hurting or whatever, you know, <laughs> we'll pray for you. The Lord will touch you and heal you. How are you doing? Father, I ask you to, I ask you to bless this baby on the inside. I ask you to bless this life on the inside on the outside. Father, I thank you that you take away all the fear and you give great boldness and confidence. Amen. Amen. Now, here's what you're going to do. You're going to come under this place in God where with great confidence you're able to serve Him. Okay? Where you have no problem letting Him touch you and mold you and shake you. Huh? If anybody needs prayer, we'll pray for you. If anybody needs healing in their body. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What did you do to yourself? What did you do? You sprained, fractured, or broke? Because you're, you're not going to the doctor, right? Is that what it is? You just haven't gone to the doc? So why are you up here? Oh, but, but why are you up here? So you had an expectation that that's going to be healed. Okay. Well, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Power of God comes on you right now, touches you. Glory of heaven overwhelms you. She caught a masataya. Hallelujah. Jesus. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I command the swell and go out of this foot. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I command this foot to move. Pain go. Pain go. Pain go. Tissue healed. Tissue healed. Hit tissue healed. Tissue healed. Pain go. Inflammation go. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. You just keep working it. You just keep working it. I command that foot to be whole. I can't, I tell you right now, if it's broken, it's healed, it's mended. If it's sprained, it's mended. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for the divine health. Father, thank you for divine healing. Thank you for divine strength. Father, I thank you for faith that stomps around with a foot. Thank you for faith. Suri Maste. What's up? Father, we ask right now in Jesus' name that Raquel's dad is saved. That he gives his life over to you. And Jesus, I break off every mind blinding spirit, every lie, every deception. It has to go from him now. Now, what's next? We got that taken care of. Okay. And so you want him gone. Now, in Jesus' name. Jesus is going to be the dentist. 
Аллилуйя. Бурастай. И растопайна. И в растопарнее. 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 I want the anointing to take nations. Father, we thank you for the anointing to take nations. Yes, Father, we thank you for a divine ability and insight to go and preach the gospel where it's never been declared. Yes, the insight and the divine ability, O oh God, to see those who have never heard yes. receive this word of heaven. Now, in Jesus' name, Father, we thank you for this mantle. Thank you for this boldness. Here's what I heard the Lord say. Now that you know that it's not done by fame, all you must do is simply obey. The Master's plan. Stand and minister to the Lord, being faithful in those things which He has given you. For He knows exactly where you're at. He knows exactly what you're doing. His purposes and plans are being fulfilled and shaped and formed within your life. And He will show you. He'll speak to you. He will appoint you. And when you go, you'll have His results. Hallelujah. Now Rusateya. Now Rusateya. Now Rusateya. Now Rusafete. Now Rufasete. Evrethesike. Rapul Satane. Ethesina Kepa. Ethesutufun. Ephrasangle. Ephrasak pro brestistan. Mandambre. Mandambre. Pistoro. 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 Pakeste. Pistoro. Mambraxte Hishipaya. Pistoro. Masandre. Bistro mosa prete, and bangje pepe te yasho, molomba prete te ya, membrita sisu kushta, irasta, a newfound authority in Jesus' name, pitara sa pepe te, ifrete te se pepe te, ifrete se kamonge de ya, irasusa nundi, in Jesus' name, irapa, irape, a flow, pa, a flow, ma membrase, a flow, an uninhibited, an uninhibited. A greater manifestation of this wonderful relationship presence. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. 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 Oh, thank you. A greater capacity in Jesus' name to receive. A greater capacity yes, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pitro Sapaya. Pitro Papaya. No limitations. No boundaries. No limitations. No boundaries of your mind and your spirit. Maromo Sukina and Bakea. What is it that you want? I have stomach pain. You have stomach pain? Put your hand on your stomach pain. Push it in. I command the stomach pain. Go! In Jesus' name. Go! In Jesus' name. Go! I command you, go! In Jesus' name. How are you doing now? Huh? How are you doing now? Huh? Go in Jesus' name. Go in Jesus' name. I command this. I command the stomach. I command these organs to obey the word of God in Jesus' name. From the crown of your head, so as your feet, I command you to obey Him in Jesus' name. Receive. Receive. What's up?
Just put your hands towards heaven. Hey, there's, noth there's nothing wrong with telling people the truth. Huh? There's nothing wrong with telling people. You know what? I tell people the truth, and it may sound harsh, but I love them just the same. They can walk around bad attitude. Don't bother me one bit. You hear me? There's nothing wrong with telling people the truth. He said, well, should I soft pedal it for Thanksgiving? <laughs> no. <laughs> You're not taking off for Thanksgiving. <laughs> the Lord told us to go everywhere, command people to repent. Well, I need to soft pedal it. But they're going to get upset. Well, no kidding. In this world, you have tribulation. Be a good cheer. I've overcome the world. And you, just because they get upset don't mean you need to get upset. They get all upset and you just be as happy as a saint in heaven. Now, what's happening over here? You sick? What's wrong with you? Does only mom know? What's wrong? Huh? You have stomach ache? You have like a flu or something, you think? You don't really know? Huh? Look at me. Would you, would you like to learn how to live in divine health? Would you like me to teach you how not to get sick? Okay. Well, I'm going to train you how not to get sick. You ready? Father, we thank you for the anointing of the Holy Ghost and the ability to stay in this realm. In Jesus' name, your foul fever and sickness and disease get off this baby right now. So I just broke the power of it. You're good. Huh? Isn't it beautiful? Some people, we got to scream at them because they don't listen good. Other people, they listen real well and just, just touch them. The Lord touches them. What do you need? Huh? Let me tell you guys what you need to do. Those of you who find yourself being tossed to and fro, those of you who find yourself being overwhelmed, I've got the remedy. I got the cure. Now you got if I give you the remedy and I give you the cure and you don't follow the remedy and the cure, then you ain't going to get healed. The remedy and the cure is you stay in the presence. You stay in the Word. You stay in prayer. These are, this is a spiritual heavenly realm. God has given us the ability to interact with Him through His Word. Why can't people get that? That's, is that complicated? He's given us the ability to interact with Him through prayer. It's an activity of the Spirit. And if you just go ahead and give yourself to these things, and you'll be in every meeting... You'll find stability and strength. Hallelujah. What's up, dear? Okay, the Lord just told um, Veronica that there's someone with stomach pains and he's going to heal them. Right? Now, I just prayed with somebody with stomach pain. Has anybody else got any stomach pain? Are your stomach pain all gone? Is it... The person I just prayed for, is your stomach pain all gone? Huh? She got healed and left. You have stomach pain. Anybody else has stomach pain? Well, Veronica, you go lay hands over there, right there on Raquel, and, the, and you just command and charge the stomach pain to go in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the anointing. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the anointing. See, I feel the anointing. I feel the cure of heaven right there. How are you doing, Raquel? Is it all gone? There we go. See, it really don't take long, especially when people are receiving. Sometimes we got to scream and holler at people because they just can't hear well. But other times, other times we just, just need to touch them just a little bit. Anybody else with stomach pain? Veronica has a special anointing for stomach pain right here tonight. 
Thank you, Veronica. You guys just start flowing the gifts of the Spirit more radically. Huh? Go ahead. Here's, here's a Cambodian for you. If you lose your life, you will find it. If you let go of your identity, you'll find that Christ is in you. <laughs> Father, I thank you for such signs and wonders and miracles demonstrated to your servant, Veronica's life, that there's going to be nothing that's going to slow her up, hold her back. Father, I thank you for the release of miracles, signs, and wonders that her plans to be a medical doctor is just a minor part of it for the gifts of healing and the miraculous anointings and the signs and wonders will flow through you, Veronica, in such ways that defy the imaginations of the saints. I tell you it's true. I tell you it's true. I tell you it's true in Jesus' name. Let me know what is it that you need. Well, he accepts. He accepts. He accepts. Now, in Jesus' name, heart problems go, heart pain go, spiritual heart problems, spiritual heart pain. Right now, disease, sickness that would try to afflict and torment your body has no more power on you in Jesus' name. Now, I command you to glorify God in your body and your spirit, which are his. Glorify God in your body and your spirit, which are his. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now I'm going to tell you what you have to do. You have to understand that if things are going to be different in your life, you have to command and, and, and demand change. You have to start doing things differently. And if you're going to make the kingdom of God first so that you can have all, that thing, all the things that God has said, then you're going to have to put the meeting place, the meeting place at the, in the prayer room, the meeting place in the communication with the Father and the study of His Word and the eating of the bread of life first, the meeting place in the assembly of the church first. The altar is going to have to be a part of your life. You're going to have to build an altar, as it were, and just stay there. Stay right there in a place of worship. So that you can begin to be introduced to a heavenly realm. Function in a heavenly realm. In interaction with them. And then, you know, you'll find yourself there being sent out. Not from his presence, but in his presence. To go communicate those things which you've been taught of God. In your fellowship and communion with him. Now, in Jesus' name, I command you to do that. Huh? Sir. I command you, in Jesus' name, will you do that? A young man named Evan Roberts said, "Why do I?" He heard about all the great revivals of, of Wales. He said, "What must we do in our generation to have a revival, to have such a great move of God as we have read about and heard about?" And his pastor said to him, "Said just be in all the meetings, because if you'll be in all the meetings, God will prepare you to be able to receive." And you never know when God, the movings of God are going to take place. So if you consecrate yourself to be in the meet, all the meetings, you won't miss out. And he consecrated himself as a 12-year-old young man. And by the time 21 years old, the glory of the Lord filled the land. The glory of the Lord filled the land through a young, a young, incapable man who set God first. So just do that. Do that. In Jesus' name, do that. Summer, what's up? What you need? Right. Right. Father, yes, I'm giving a hand. Father, Urasabriki Shalomum Brosaya. Take hold of Summer's life. 
Take hold of her life. Take hold of her hands. Take hold of her heart. Take hold of her areas of insecurity and make her secure. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you that Summer is able to put her trust in you and that you strengthen her and empower her to do it right now. So that even if her family moves, she understands she's been married to you. <laughs> Hallelujah. And that you're a good husband. Hallelujah. You're a good keeper. You're a good provider. You're a good protector. And Lord, we ask you for her whole family to be saved. Lord, we ask you for the whole family of summer. The Lord says you and your house should be saved. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you, Lord 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 Jesus. Oh, the glory of his presence. Oh, the glory of your presence. All the beauty, all the splendor, your anointing. Hallelujah. So we got the Filipino section right here. La Blasa de Mengle. Iku de Monsinea. Mengle Brushiki Galambri. List. Oh, the beauty of your presence. Lord Jesus. Oh, the rapture, your anointing, I want to stay here forever. And you're going to do that. You're going to do that. It'll still remain stay. You're going to do that. It remain sing later. It remain my disappear. Father, I thank you for showing us the paths of life. Father, we thank you for showing us the way in which we are to walk in them. Father, we thank you that you take hold of us by the power of the demonstration of the Holy Ghost. That you rapture us in this realm of your joy. That you rapture us in this realm of your peace. You rapture us in this realm of your love. That we might be trained to follow you. To function in you. To live by you. To not be prisoners of sorrow. To not be prisoners of failure. To not be prisoners of human ability. Or fear. But to walk in the beauty and the power of your empowerment. The beauty and the authority of your empowerment.
Somebody says, I say, what am I supposed to do? <laughs> Signs, wonders, and miracles. <laughs> how, how do I do them? <laughs> Very easily. <laughs> By the anointing. <laughs> how, how does the anointing work? Because I don't want anything else. I don't want, I don't want anything else. I have no other ambition. <laughs> I, just want, I just want the things of the Spirit. That's how the anointing works. Just because you just want things of the Spirit. When you want the things of the Spirit, when they're more hungry for the things of the Spirit than anything else, and you begin, you, you watch it, you see the flow, the, the, act, the activity of the Holy Ghost, it just, and, it, and it captivates your attention, and you want to have that, and you covet it. That's how the anointing works. If you can live without these things, you can't have them. If you can live without this, you can't have it. If it's something you feel obligated to do, you can't have it. If it's something that you want more than anything else, it's yours. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. People undervalue and underestimate the importance of just standing in the presence of the Lord, faithfully worshiping Him, serving Him, loving Him. People underestimate the value. Of continually being desperate for an encounter with Him. Because that's where he shapes and molds greatness. Papa said, I'm devoted to make you great. Pretty radical, ain't it? Hey? Pretty radical. Shocking. Shocking. Let me tell you, when you say, when you make decisions to participate with things of this world, you are making a conscious decision to be conformed to the world. That's when you step across the line and you go into the camp of Satan, you're in the camp of the enemy. And he tries to lay claim upon you. So don't cross over that line too many times. Because if you do, you could end up not coming back. Just decide that in this day forward, just decide you're not crossing over the line. Just because there's some people that believe that you can go out and you can participate in worldly activities in, 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 in the bars and in dances and all this other stuff. I'm just telling you right now has nothing to do with the kingdom of God, has nothing to do with the spirit of God. Therefore, by default, it's only one other thing. And everybody who goes and handles it realizes that the impact that it has in their life, it robs them of hunger and thirst. It robs them of faith and confidence. It robs them of their vision of the person Christ Jesus and their understanding of the realm in which he dwells and they become consumed with the earth and ultimately will be swallowed up by it so don't do that no more don't do that anymore in Jesus name don't do that anymore 
Rather just live like this. As the deer panteth for the water, so my soul longeth after thee. Are you alone? Are my heart's desire and I long to worship thee? You alone are my strength, my shield. To you alone will my spirit yield. You alone are my heart's desire. And I long to work. Okay, how are, how are you doing over here? Huh? How's it going? Is all the pain gone yet? Huh? Step on my foot. Here, stand up. Kataka ni ipi. Walk around on him. Come here, come back here, come here, come here. You're not working good enough for satisfy me. Now, Father, we thank you that you increase our faith by doing mighty signs and wonders in our midst. Now, Lord, we know that the healing of this foot, this broken foot or whatever it is, is not a mighty sign and wonder. It's a small thing. Just a little thing. It ain't much. But, Lord, we just thank you for even the little things. It's just barely a little bit more than getting healed of the sniffles. Hallelujah. And Father, I just thank you for making Caleb like a Caleb in the spirit. He says this is the way it is. I just got healed. I stomp around on it, walk around on it. The pain has to go in Jesus' name. It has to go in Jesus' name. It has to go in Jesus' name. It has to go in Jesus' name. And the muscle has to go in Jesus' name. Pain has to go. Pain has to go. Amen. We work in a miracle now. I can feel it. It's beautiful. Somebody starts working with you. No, I mean, one of one of the one of the things that I love to see. You know, especially that we've, we've, been, we've been able to see it in foreign countries is where the youth get so stirred up about faith and miracles and signs and wonders. We, we literally, and I literally, literally watched young people go and grab folks out of wheelchairs whose legs are completely paralyzed and drag them around. And skinning up their knees, just dragging them through the dirt. And I remember one time in a particular situation, pastoral instinct kind of stepped out. And said, I wanted to say, hey, you know, don't do that. You're dragging them through the dirt, man. You're skinning them up. And the Lord said, no, just leave them alone. And I just refused to look at they just dragging the person through the dirt. And it wasn't just one. It was several groups. They put their eyes upon and it wasn't long, and the people were walking. They were walking around. They weren't pushing the wheelchairs either. They're, they were walking around. They were walking up the steps to the platform with their skinned up knees from being drugged around. It's just radical faith, man. It's just radical faith. It's radical faith. It's, I won't be denied faith. 
It just pushed the thing over on in Jesus' name, faith. It said, it didn't talk about how Uncle Holy Joe died of some sickness and he loved God more than anybody else and there's an excuse for why we got this problem. It's nonsense. It's not supposed to be. It's, a, it's demanding a miracle. It's a demanding a miracle. Like you demanding, you demanding that manifest presence of God in your life. You demand it. You place a demand on that which Father has purposed. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, we love you guys. If there's anybody else that just, you just, you need something from heaven, you haven't got it yet, we're here to help you get a breakthrough and get it. What's up? You think a healing needed in somebody? Somebody got neck pain? Somebody got a pain in the neck? <laughs> somebody got neck pain? Anyway? I think it has to do with thyroid. Thyroid? Does anybody got a thyroid problem in here? Anyone got, anyone got, anyone have a thyroid? Thyroid? My aunt your aunt has a thyroid problem? Yeah. Okay, is your aunt saved? No. Okay, so I've we got, okay. Thing. Okay, you're seeing on Thursday. So then what's going to happen then? So we're going to speak right now to her thyroid. Her thyroid is going to be healed. Okay, and so that you can go and just interview and say, hey, by the way, did your thyroid, is your thyroid not giving you problems anymore? And she says, wow, you know, surprisingly, I don't have any more inflammation there. It's not giving me problems anymore. Then you can tell her, yeah, well, we prayed for you on Sunday night that the thyroid problem would be healed and Jesus touched you. Now, why don't you go and surrender your life to him because he loves you? <laughs> He's your healer, so let him be your savior too. So now in the name of Jesus, we send the word to your auntie. In Jesus' name. Is she Cambodian? Yeah, she is. We send the word to the Cambodians. Cambodians are brilliant people, you know. They are. They, huh? they, you watch what happens when the Cambodians rise up. She also has endometriosis. Huh? She also has endometriosis. She has endometriosis? She needs overhaul. On endometriosis? Okay, auntie's got, look, we're getting auntie healed. <laughs> Thyroid problems and endometriosis. We send the word. I send the word. We send the word right now. We send the word right now. Healed in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for working this miracle for your thing. Lord, we know that you're glad to do these things so the intent that people might believe. Thank you, Father. Endometriosis, in Jesus' name, goes. A completely brand new uterus. Hallelujah. Who rasa, perfect. Hallelujah. Endometrium. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hasapokinaya. And you just go ahead and lay your hand on her and just confirm the work, okay, on Thursday. Hallelujah. Signs and wonders, miracle lady over here. What's up over there? Your throat's been hurting? Well, Nikki, go over there and lay your hands on her. Her throat's been hurting. Is there, her throat's not going to be hurting by the time you get over there. It's just so good. Stagger on over there. Fire God touches her right there in the throat. There it is. There we go. That works. That one does it. Next. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Next. Hey, I tell you, it's just the funnest, the funnest thing you can do in life is flowing the, flow the miracle power of, of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Well, we love you guys. I can just see that everybody's in such an amazing hurry to go to leave. Now what's up? Okay, well go ahead and just stop. I think that's a pretty good thing to say. Ulama or Ungo, Olenis, 
Nisi unu udu alava mama no sit oli te tai no mata. Io tutti anandesi omako ananti asu. Ziba luri a te lo ti lo vale vo ti alla vetio. Zimanduri a si poru kushende la baba si turia. In Jesus name. He says I am. Therefore you can. Paul said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So I can. And God says not to say I won't or I can't, but to say I will and I can. I can do all things. Look to the cross. See the salvation of the king that has risen and he lives in you. So you can. You can do all things. And Caleb, there's a mighty call in your life. And you will. You will perform those things. You need to take God a little has. run. I think you should take a little Hallelujah. run. Hallelujah. Caleb, I think you should take a little run. Hallelujah. Come on, man. Just push it out there. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on. That's good enough right there. That's good enough, Bubba. That works right there. <laughs> I guarantee you, you're fine now. I guarantee, I guarantee you. I, I guarantee you. I guarantee you. I guarantee you. Hallelujah. Praise God. That's it. That's a jump. Look at that. That is a serious jump. I tell you, Father, I ain't going to let that stand alone by itself. Somebody jump it around. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Pops. Thank you, Pops. Thank you, Pops. Thank you, Pops. Hallelujah. Someone said, well, what if it's broken and he hurts it more? Well, what if it's healed and he increases in faith more? Uh, amen. What if it's healed and he knows now that a great miracle power is available to him like on a level that he never knew before and then he goes shakes nations just standing in a position of faith knowing that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he'll do what he said he'll do through you. All you have to do is believe. Amen. 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 <laughs> You're going to be fine. You're going to be all right. I'll tell you right now. You're going to be just fine. Well, good. I pray that all of you uh, come back on Wednesday night. We're going to have a wonderful time in the Holy Ghost and Joshua's going to be here and Allie's going to be here and grandbaby's going to be here and you bring your family members here don't stay out of church just because it's Thanksgiving it's a time to be it's a time to be in church okay I know some of you got to go out of town I know you're from out of town and you have to go out of town I understand that you, give you, you have a permission slip I just praise God so much I mean I told you if you're going to miss church, you need a permission to slip. Signed by Jesus. <laughs> and I had a number of different people say, you know, I'm, I, I, well, can I have a permission slip? Because of this thing and that thing. And I was just so blessed by it. I was so honored by people who will submit themselves to the Lord who, who will go that far. And, of course, you know me, I'm just, you know, unless I heard something from the Lord, I'm going to say absolutely, you know. You need to go take care of the things that you've got to do. It, it's the, I, I think the bigger thing is the willingness to say, Lord, I'm, I'm going to come under your I'm gonna come under your authority. I'm going to listen to the people who know what I need to do. And, you know, the primary thing you're going to hear me say over and again is get yourself in church. Flow in the Holy Ghost. Participate in the things of the Spirit. Give yourself to the Word. Give yourself to prayer. And if you think that's too harsh and too hard and too, you know, then I, you, I don't command you to be joyful. Huh? I'm not going to tolerate you being in pain and sorrowful. I figured that's a good shepherd. Huh? I'm not going to tolerate sickness and disease. Just leave you in it. Amen. So we just praise God for a bunch of people who cooperating with God. And, yeah. How are you? Totally healed. It's, huh? 
Yes. It ain't comes easy, doesn't it? Huh? It does, you Holy Ghost girl, you. Thank you, Jesus. Well, hug a bunch of people around you. Tell them that you love them, bless them in the name of Jesus. See you on Wednesday night.